Welcome to Dialogue Choices Podcast. Someone didn't finish their homework. Can you guess who? Why are you putting my name in the comments? What's fucking wrong with you people? I did it. <laughs> Andrew is the kind of person that finishes his homework. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, fuck. I unplugged my headphones. Oh, that, oh, you can't hear us. It was, uh, uh, it was Keith. Oh, damn it. I finished my essay over a week ago. Damn it. Now I'm saying an essay because Andrew, you messed, you ruined me. I told you it's an essay. Your brain is like me. It is very school. Like, it is a short story. Like, it is a short Colonel story. Just woke yeah, up this to is the what you would do in school. He, you would write he, small Colonel essays. Colonel just woke up to the nightmare that he didn't do his homework. <laughs> I didn't wake up. At least up. he has it's his pants PM on. Or 10 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, we decided to um, to ask people for suggestions about writing a short story, so we could uh, have fun in the dialogue choices podcast. And then uh, each one of us picked uh, picked a, a thing. What did you pick, Keith? The other way around. Pick Keith. That's how it goes. <laughs> pick Keith. Yeah. I did. The sky is no longer blue. Or mm. I guess it was you walk outside and the sky is no longer blue. Hmm. Mm, that's a, that seems pretty fun. It's very open. I re- yeah. I, I, I went. I I had a I had I went on a walk when we were thinking about doing this, and I landed on this phrase, and then I iterated through like four versions of what it could be. Because <laughs> I was like, obviously, mm-hmm. it could be like there could be like some kind of like catastrophe that's happening, or a glitch in the matrix, or a bunch of other like sci-fi or dystopian or apocalypsy implications. And then I threw yeah. all those ideas in the garbage. Oh, and you made it I, about bunnies well, instead. I went thoroughly up my own ass with this one. <laughs> nice. Shall we, shall we hear it today, or is it going to uh, be Andrews? Uh, I, could get it, I could just get it out of the way. I'm, re- it's I'm, a, I have no, I'm I, reminded of the fact that I hate presentations, and uh, like, well, I like the idea of writing something. I didn't like the idea of actually doing it <laughs> afterwards. So once once that realization started hitting, I'm like, why did I do this? Why did I come up with we, this idea? This is a bad idea. I have a. Uh, I, I have had to read for, for the class. That was like the no, worst no. nightmare. <laughs> I have we, like the inverse problem where i i love to present but i do not want to do any of the work like if you just hand me a <laughs> script i will read i will just read it without any hesitation but if you're like write and present i'm like okay i'll do one of those things like <laughs> yeah we, we could read your story for you <laughs> <laughs> that way that way you don't have to present Maybe you read one of our stories no 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 that's that's not how that's you not, get that's full grade. That's not what this is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, we all you, wrote Andrew? short what? stories. Well, some of us what wrote your... short stories. Some of us did. What was your uh, What was your story, Andrew? My story was uh, a plagiarist has a midlife crisis and wants to make something original. Oh. And yeah, I think I I think I had a pretty fun time with it. I think I got a I had I have a really good premise and uh really fun jabs at uh i don't know what you'd call it jabs at just content creation and creativity um Mm. stuff like that so well what about you uh, colonel which one did you pick mine is a city where every resident is a time traveler (laughs) what a nightmare (laughs) What a nightmare, it's, it's, yeah. I don't... It's difficult, but I made it more difficult than that. Uh, I, I mean, you have I, an I haven't made it. at least or something? I do. Well, I don't have the ending, which is important, so I'm going to have to rewrite the beginning to fit the ending. That, but I do that, have an That outline. is very oh. important, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine re- a cross between The Matrix and uh, Cowboy Bebop. That's the tone that I'm aiming for. Wow, so, hope... so, so don't, don't get your expectations up. <laughs> 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 well, I, I'm not I'm not a good writer, so um I I was actually also struggling <laughs> with the, the tone of writing, but then I went for something more uh, utilitarian. I was trying to be very highfalutin at the beginning and I was like, I, I can't I don't have pace for this. I can yeah. write like 200 words in that tone, but not 2000. I I found that I, I literally I wrote up... the ending first. Yeah, that's a good way, I feel. Then I did structural yeah. weird shit, so I had to like 
I had to outline my entire timeline multiple times where I had like the chronological timeline and then the actual order in which the story is told afterwards. Mm hmm. Like, I went structure no. weird. I don't know. Shall we uh, dive in? Uh, fine. How do I signify? <laughs> I don't know how to. What, what, part of my worry is that I'm like, this thing's like complicated in a way that like I that I think works in text. <laughs> but I'm like, how do you follow what's happening when I read it? How do you denote? Paragraph, not paragraph breaks, but like scene breaks or like, you know, like. When there's an extra space in the line hmm. breaks and that denotes that it's now a different scene or something like there's some sort of time or location skip that happens in books all the time. Like verbally, I I would just keep reading, which doesn't work. And I think a, I think hmm. a, an audio drama podcast would have like a fucking musical interlude thing <laughs> is how they do like this is like the fucking like no sleep podcast for the whistlers or whatever <laughs> and it's like some there's like a fucking audio team and voice actors and they do something to denote those because mine has a bunch of those and i'm like i don't know how to communicate those okay we can we can we can figure this out we can communicate this behind the scenes because we're on discord right now so you just <laughs> you know you, you let us know and me and andrew where we do some acapella kind of musical interlude <laughs> and it what? works Right? Aca uh, have you never done a cappella, Andrew? What is it? Uh, I mean, I'm aware of the concept, but no, I haven't found myself like particularly in a situation where I could do that. <laughs> do you like beatboxing or something? Maybe a little bass line? Beatboxing. Again, I, I wish I'm I was, aware of it'd the concept. It'd be helpful concept, if I had a soundboard, but I don't have a soundboard. <laughs> I mean, soundboard definitely would solve the issue. Andrew, do you have a, do you have a, a musical interlude in your soundboard? I need to have like a thematically what appropriate soundboard sound <laughs> what what kind of thematically appropriate i mean i got a lot of sounds here uh but if they're the right sounds is kind of a i don't think music is very specific like I, <laughs> do you have multiple musical notes in your I, I i mean i have multiple music oh really uh, Most of yeah, his you buttons want, are you want like things, which is, is it, not is what it a, the story is. Is it a mystery? Do you have? Are you trying to to Ooh. do a solve a detective case? <laughs> Denied. <laughs> we figured Wait, that's that, great. I love. What it. is yeah. that from? Is that from <laughs> Phoenix Wright? <laughs> no, that's from Death Note. That's L's theme. Death Note. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I've got that. Um, but it needs to be, uh, you know, it, it needs just to be th three or four notes. It's -na 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 -na. and that's it because it, it's just an interlude. It's not, <laughs> we're not, we're not setting the well, tone. Because if you were setting that, if this had a, a backing track, then you we would need to have different backing tracks for each scene, and that would be a I mean, high production value. I've got cliffhanger music. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, I understand Keith that like meme that. now. <laughs> yeah, um, I understand what's going on with that song now. I just thought it was I've a nice song. It. I didn't know that it was a thing. I've got mm, a it's uh, lovely. It's a lovely meme. I've got music for um, for those in, for, unit, for those interested for in knowing for the song. Like, it's, what? Uh, I was just gonna say the name of the song. It's, it's roundabout, roundabout. Yes. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I've got music for um, Unity, so like uh, a togetherness song. <laughs> uh, that's good. And then... <laughs> it's worth pointing out, that's the, that's the USSR anthem, not the international, but still. Um, what else? I... I mean, you've got, you know, if you got a set romantic mood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what else I got here. Uh, <laughs> that one is... Comedic, uh, comedic uh, failure? George Michael's... Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Sorry, I have two trumpets. That's also pretty, uh, that's pretty good as well. That's, that's disappointment. This is a uh, comedic failure. That's from... Uh, what the fuck? How big is the soundboard? <laughs> It, that's from uh, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, or is that another? Is that another one before that? No, I think that's. I believe that's the the ending credits for. 
That's Curb Your Enthusiasm? I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Man, I'm yeah, getting old. That's, that's the ending it's funny credits. That it's that's like it's familiar, credits. but I think I only have heard it in like videos. <laughs> Like yeah, it yeah, it's it, they're all like they're all meme stuff at this point. But yeah, the uh, do you have any initial D stuff? Any uh, Euro for what, <laughs> what are they called? I I don't have any initial D stuff actually. I do. Uh, it's I a very do need niche to get kind some. of meme. Yeah, I, you know what? Now that you mentioned that, I do. I feel like I'm missing that. I should definitely have that. Um, I've got. It's amazing. It's I I do great. have. If you if you are feeling like a joke didn't land, uh, but you want it to land. I have that as a backup solution. The flutes? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> just fucking start. You just make a bad pun and then you just hit the button. <laughs> just fuck you. <laughs> and then, of course, like if that. someone threatens to dox me, I'll do it myself. Sacramento, California. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah. Muslim three. Uh, yeah, there's not. Uh, I mean, that's for music. There's not a lot. You know, there's like only so much. Uh, there's only so much meme music you can possibly have. I guess there's probably. I'm trying to think here. Uh, bet. I bet I can find like a. I really I'll like. Have, I'll the... just have to say flashback and now. <laughs> oh, oh, you know yeah, what you can, I. I I'm, I am missing uh um that's that's what I'm missing. I I am missing down, flashback. Downloading it now. Flashback. flashback. What uh, is that? Flashback. Is there a flashback sound? The boom yeah, sound. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the the a harp kind of arpeggio thing. Uh yeah, I really like that that flute that really badly played flute for for bad jokes that is going Slide around. Whistle? No, it's like um uh, it's basically like a really badly played song on a on a flute and it's like it's really really bad uh, adam something adam something does that in a couple of his videos i'm genuinely terrified of what the sound no is like, i don't know i don't know what, what, what the sound is but it about. sounds terrifying like it's, it's if i i'm like is it like the jurassic park thing on a kazoo or whatever yeah oh, oh it's a God, kazoo it might best. be a kazoo it, or a recorder, like a flute and a recorder, for some reason, is two different things. Was it a harmonica? I don't remember. Oh, it was, yeah, it was a recorder. Definitely. It was a Jurassic Park theme on a recorder. I remember that. Yeah, it, it, I think any song uh, works for that. But it, there's one in particular. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll look up the meme after the, the thing and I'll send you, but it's... Uh... Uh, no, our audience is very my bad. on sorry. flick, so they know they know all of on that flick. Stuff. On flick, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what on flick means. <laughs> you know, it's lit. It, it, they do that. They do the. They fuck with it. On flick. Oh come on! English is weird with the e's and the u's. <laughs> I know. It's flick is another word. It's way funny. <laughs> flick, yeah. I have no idea what fl flick fleek. It's fleek. Yeah, fleek. Okay. It's not. I don't even. I don't know if I can call it English. It's just stuff people have made up. It's uh, English. People say it, so it's English. I guess. Never yeah. mind the fact that they're American. Fleek. Is that even like a definition word? It shows up on <laughs> Google. Does bring it up on fleek? Extremely good, attractive, or stylish. See, that's our audience. Popularized by 2014 or, video end. post on social media service Vine by Kayla Newman. Teaches Monroe. Oh, it's a, it's an eyebrow know, related I, thing. I barely it? know what any of those words are, but it's from a dead platform, Vine, which is dead. Oh no, my new memes that I think are new are actually really old. It's like eight years old. <laughs> oh my god, I am feeling my hair <laughs> falling out of my... Air <laughs> Fleek is really old. Whoa. Uh, yeah, dang. that's that's pretty old. Okay, finally. So now yeah. we have I have flashback sound effects now. So what does that we're, mean? We're all... uh. <laughs> it's like a comedy <laughs> sound. I can't do that. <laughs> that's that, isn't all flashbacks <laughs> comedy? Like no one thinks about a flashback in serious mode. <laughs> 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 zero famously game of thrones zero flashbacks <laughs> <laughs> yeah every flashback in game of thrones starts like that 
<laughs> Literally, he was, was I watching like cartoons? <laughs> was I watching the wrong one? Uh, I he don't was... know what you watched. Didn't you stop after season one? Uh, probably. Or, or did you secretly watch for a little bit? You like watched season one and then spoiled it for me and then stopped watching. <laughs> I did my time. Then I did. I did my duty. <laughs> I tried saving you, and you didn't listen. <laughs> There was good times along the way until that happened. Yeah, Maybe every bad relationship well. has good times. That doesn't well, change the fact. Well, the books the might end well. <laughs> yeah, and then they we're probably fine. will. They probably will, but even if they end tell exactly that, like the, the Tell the, that to the guy who the, has to write it after Martin passes away and doesn't finish it. I guess he's, he's going to be really excited. He's good. I, I, he's yeah, he's fine something. right now, but he's not finishing the story right now. He's got to do <laughs> like, it. Don't worry about it. Let the dude rest. All right, let's get this behind me. <laughs> Why did I do All this right. to myself? <laughs> Buck I, buckle up. It, no matter, yeah, again, if you have too much hesitation, if you want, like, time to prep, just, I'm more No, that to... just makes it worse. That just makes me think about it <laughs> Does longer. Does it? The expectation? Yes. There's literally nothing, there's no upgrade about that. I actually did a whole <laughs> class presentation just about being nervous about doing class presentations. I went all metal with it. <laughs> I had, I had like a joke where like on the bus to the, the to the class on the day of doing the presentation that I knew I had to do uh, that the character like tried listening to music to distract himself. And it was fucking it was the fucking eight mile song, <laughs> which is exactly about the same emotion. <laughs> <laughs> There's no escape in art, only reflections. There's no escaping homework either. As it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> After all I these mean, years, you're late for your assignment. The I teacher's like asking it. for everyone to turn in their essays, and you fucking, you have nothing. <laughs> I didn't even, oh, the thing is, I did start, but I, I it might as well not. <laughs> we had, we literally had double the time that we originally had. That makes, that only makes it worse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I, I the thing is, I didn't make my homework for for like four years for my last four years of high school. Any homework whatsoever. What does that what? mean? What do you mean last Wait, four years of high school? But how many were years does high school have? Were there more years of high school before the last four? <laughs> so from grade seven to grade twelve, that oh. so from from grade nine to grade twelve, I didn't didn't do any homework. Okay. Ever. We only have we only have four years of high school, so I was like, hang on a minute. Oh, here. What do you mean? Count seven and eight. What do you you mean didn't take it up high school, four? Keith. Yeah, we. Had, I didn't take it up high school. That's what's wrong with me. I need to go back. <laughs> I need to go. Didn't finish me. doctor. <laughs> yeah, no, we have we have. I, I forgot the middle school is like a weird American bullshit thing where we're like, we need more schools. What if there was we another school? We also have school? middle school. It's f the fifth and the sixth grade. It's the middle school. Oh, uh, elementary schools K through six. Oh, no, no, you're already an adult by the time you reach fifth That's grade. That's fucking That's seven years of elementary school. <laughs> That's so many years. That is a lot. That yes, a lot. and then seven and yeah. eighth is middle school, and then nine through twelve is, is high school. Seven and eight? Only two? It's not... Why, why is it... Why is that even there? You might as well just... I don't know. You know. I think it's framed around puberty, maybe. Like, when people massively start changing... Like physically, uh, they like are grouped with people that are the closest to them in each stage or something. That's my guess based on literally never checking. I just remember like being in school and thinking sixth graders were these massive Goliath people, <laughs> which was really funny. And then, of course, sixth graders are little shits. So, like, I don't, I don't know how the teeth. fuck that was ever a thing. I thought sixth graders are not adults. <laughs> when you are a sixth grader, you feel like an adult. Legal adults uh, are barely adults. Have you talked to them? <laughs> when you're idiots. 18, no. you feel like an adult. Like, There's a pandemic going only, on. I'm not supposed to talk only, to anyone. You're like, everyone's you're, an uh, idiot until they're at least 25. That's I have never been an idiot. And some of us make the mistake very, of recording several years me, of that period. Only past very me generous. as an idiot. Present me is <laughs> never an idiot. Andrew and I have like years of footage of us being idiotic lower 20s <laughs> it's just it's terrible that's a that's a bad time for to have witnesses <laughs> i'm i'm so glad that i was never alive during those time periods you were never well, alive was that 
I was. <laughs> that wasn't me. I was I born at age 28 about. without a face. Yep, just Wait, is just straight, just like showed up. That's it. Story prop. <laughs> Fully formed like a teleporter accident. Exactly. No, don't make uh, teleporters. It's even. It's, uh, that's even harder. That's even harder than time travel. I yeah, it is. It teleporter, scares me to think that there's accident problems. Questions, stories are great. They're it seems fun. it's crazy They're because horrible. like. I love when Facebook reminds me that I had a Facebook when Facebook was first made. Uh, so it's showing me stuff well. from like back in high school. And it's like, hey, remember this? And you're like, oh, delete. <laughs> like <laughs> you just you've, you like Facebook's like, here's a thing. And you're like, oh, thank God. I can just finally find that and re remove it now. Like I've slowly been trying to like purge every single line. Uh, because, like, if you delete... You Every delete. thought you had as a 20-year-old. Yeah, yeah. because, like, if you delete your internet. Facebook, it never deletes. It doesn't go away. It just, like, disables. But it's still sitting there somewhere. And <laughs> so my idea is, like, well, I might as well just, like, actually remove this content by hand. Uh, and then you can close the account on top of that. And then it's even more of a process to get your information back. Um, but that, the but it's, like, fun to... Uh, hmm? Then the more that you keep talking about being ashamed of your past, the more I was just incentivized to like fucking way back machine you. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, if I it's did possible. already. You see, you know, I've, I what? found like like you. I've I've already I've literally shown it to you before. I found like the, like art that you're like ashamed of. Oh and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blog posts and things. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder how that extends to like uh, certain websites. Actually, it really, Wait, sucks. Can... it really sucks that there's websites that just, like, chronicle you, essentially. Oh, wait, uh, the like, thing about you... the Wayback Machine is that it works really well for, you know, keeping the things you don't want about your personal things. But then when you're working on websites and when you're developing stuff, you're like, I really want a Wayback Machine from this particular page. Nope, they didn't index that bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's totally random indexing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a great. The... I, I donate to them when I buy on um, on Humble Bundle. It turns out the internet is it. big. It is okay. So it is, I did type that in right. Good. That means you can't way back machine that, which is good. <laughs> that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> I think I think Keith is trying to way back machine his essay. <laughs> what? I was There's trying to a... remember what the word was. Keith is trying yeah, to. Yeah, I think. I think, I think two Keith's hours. Like, We're already twenty-two minutes. I just Come need on. To, yeah, I just need. To, I just I, need to slowly waste time until you're at. And then, oh shit! Oh, my food's here. I guess we got to go nope. for it. Uh, <laughs> I I do think yeah, Keith's way back machining thing was like what like spawned a couple of weeks of me trying to gain access to like an old live journal so I could lock it <laughs> and like remove it because like I just it was. That was There's literally. literally oh, yeah, I have a folder called the Andrew Archive. Yeah, great, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I I like to think that like the the uh, some government agency has yeah. one too, but theirs is far less embarrassing. It's just a yeah, lot I've of really your, dumb. Uh, I've got your One Piece fan art. That's like a comic nice. in the universe. Yeah, that's. Uh... There's a guy with a beard that has a hand. Yeah, don't people normally have hands? The beard has a hand. <laughs> oh, okay. It has a hand. Uh, <laughs> okay, that... Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, that was like it was a create your own character and their own devil fruit ability. And I think yeah. I just made I think I just made mine. Uh, so so get me to 3000 yeah. on Patreon and I'll expose what the Andrew fuck? for what the, the fuck? world. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I'm joking. That's illegal. Um, <laughs> that... <laughs> it's like. It's like it's not revenge porn. It's like revenge cringe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's that's what I was trying to think of. I did. I, I just like yeah. It's, it is not revenge porn, but it is like some type of revenge. It's some. It's, it is some revenge. <laughs> I just don't know what the word is. The uh, revenge cringe. Yeah, that's 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 awful. That's probably worse than. I think that's worse than anything else I could think of. Is reverse cringe. Like I would. I, I think I could emotionally recover from my nudes being put on the internet, but I don't think I could recover from cringe. That, like, if everyone knew about like the stuff I posted in like high school, I'd probably die. What do you? Oh my god! You wouldn't. Like, 
I don't know. I I, 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 mean, I, I die said, a little look, bit whenever I encounter it. I have 89 oh. <laughs> journal entries from like beginning of so, high school. Trust sometimes me. Sometimes I'll find I, a comment I made on an old video. 10 years ago because it's still the same account but now it's a fucking verified account making the stupid comment because it was like me as like a 19 year old saying something but it, it, that it, but that account is now given like the perceived authority of like 32 year old me with a fucking check mark and shit and it's like i don't like that yeah <laughs> the, I can the algorithm's that. like let's show this comment to everyone and i'm like no I can't I can be held responsible that. for all the things I said when I was 22 years old. I don't remember any of it. <laughs> uh, mm. Should have just made, should have just started over with a new identity. <laughs> mm, I, that is, yeah. Every day, I honestly regret keeping this username. Like, the, as the days continue, it becomes harder and harder. Because there's such justify. a long history tied to it. Yeah, it's just, it, it's getting, it's like, worse there there's this weird uh i don't know like i'm trying to think of you know like and uh there's in the beginning there was anonymity and then there became like <laughs> kind of a need to tie yourself to an account like you wanted to have you know like if you wanted to have access to facebook you have to put your name in you can't just be like my name's doodiddle and it's like okay doodiddle like what give me your social now um it's but, super weird that people's like facebook accounts come up as like search results yeah and but like for me it's even like i feel even worse because you could just type in knackleson and knackle and you'll just get this swath just just like pure unfiltered mess of history in all corners of like somehow i've extended tendrils to almost every facet <laughs> of of the internet in some way i have like an account on some a drink mixing website i don't even remember making an account on that but it's mine i can access it i got the password for it it's an Ever I can just... it was from everquest wasn't it your name yeah my my name is from everquest so like i played everquest you made a when character I was 13. and then you made another character yeah. that was a son of your other character and that became Correct. your name was was that was their yeah. familial relation <laughs> yeah because i i was lazy and so i i came up with a really I good even... name once and then couldn't make up another name. So I just took that name and added a K to it. And then I was making a username for, I think before then my, my username was like C manic two nine. Like was there ever yeah. even a second knackle or was the second knackle's entire name actually knackle son of knackle? No, there was a second knackle. Uh, so there was, there was N A K L, which was the first. And then I needed to make another character and I was like, shit, I can't make up a good name. So I made N A K K L and the joke became I was playing on that second character and one of the people I played with was like, wait a second, I thought you have in a character named Knackle already. And I was like, no, no, this is this is Knackle. That's the son of Knackle. And they're like, oh, OK. <laughs> um, and, and so that just like stuck. And at the, like, again, at the time, I think my username was like C Manic because uh, I spelt maniac wrong. And I wanted to get rid of that because I hated how embarrassing that failure was. But it was like. I couldn't think of a better username. Um, Manic is so a like, word. That, yeah, that's but, the thing you could uh, roll with. One, I misspelled Manic anyways. But two, it just <laughs> sounds like it sounds like Manic when you read it out loud phonetically. It sounds like Manic, but it's not spelt like Manic. It's spelt like Maniac um, missing one letter. <laughs> like <laughs> this reminds me of when one of my growing up when one of my one of my friend's main characters in Diablo 2 was named Cinnipper. It was an mm. Amazon named Cinniper because they couldn't spell Sniper. No. Oh. Cinniper. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. What, a, what, a, what a crash and burn. Meanwhile, yeah, my man. name's practically Noise. I just had... I just want, I was trying to use Sebastian as my username on Xbox because uh, because I was using it in German class. And then it was taken, obviously, so that I just kept adding... I, I, it was like my fucking, like, tenth, like, most done with this attempt at, take, at getting an, un, an an untaken name and so i just ended up with sb at the end which is basically noise i think the logic was just that it, those would, would have been my those would be my initials if my name was sebastian that's it that's the entire logic <laughs> it doesn't it's stupid. i mean it works and now it's all now it's my entire career is tied to that url that username like it's my mm. twitter it's my youtube it's my patreon account Womp, womp. But 
I I don't know. I mean, that's I I think there's some value in having something consistent like that. I think it is nice to be able to uh cuz again, this is like you think of in the past people have photographs and videos of themselves. They can keep it in a shitty box and they put it in a shitty attic and they come Look at back my every shitty like, box. Yeah, and like every 15 years they come back and they're like, man, remember when I like enjoyed living and they pull out this box and they look at the pictures. Um, and like there's the kind of a box of lies. <laughs> yeah, basically. But <laughs> look they, at this time uh, where we smiled for three seconds in a vacation we hated. <laughs> exactly. And you don't think about that. You just think of the fact that like, oh, yeah, I remember we did this thing. And you kind of your brain just like nicely glosses over all the bad parts. And yeah. Uh, and like being able to have a consistent username on the internet can feel kind of like that. You can just go on Google and be like, ha ha. And you can like look up your username and find a random account and be like, oh yeah, I remember I went to this site to do this thing. Like <laughs> there's fun. And you can find like forum posts from yourself. Like I can look through all of these journal entries and it's like reading a diary. Look I can at be all like, these wow. dumb arguments you got on forums. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, and it's 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 just it fun just reminds to be me able of to me finding fucking H bomber guys old po I found his old account on like uh, something awful and saw like his fucking that on something awful they have a moderation history so you can see how many times he got banned by like brutal moose and various other people on something awful and like <laughs> they have notes that are like you little shit <laughs> like, like he, like, he was clearly a shit stir and he got banned or suspended like eight times i think and I'm like that's Jesus. just all that's just listed there and i'm like all right well that's funny yes that's insane <laughs> it but it's yeah, but Your it's like it's, but it's really forever. It's real fun to be able to have that access to be able to go back and look at that stuff. Um, at least I think. And I, I also think that there's a. Uh, it, there's a level of while things are cringy, like, again, looking at some of this stuff, like some of these entries are high top tier cringe stuff that you could probably kill somebody with. Um, wow. It's uh, it's bad. Like this is the kind of stuff that like I, I don't know. When I read it, I'm like, man, I think I think it would have been easier to get like stabbed to death than finishing this paragraph. And it's but it's a good reminder of like, man, look at that. Look at that sad, pathetic. I would have pushed down a staircase person I used to be, and I am just very glad that someone didn't push me down a staircase because I got to be a better person. Um, at least tangentially, like right now, I think I'm a better person. But in like 10 years, I'm going to look back and wa rewatch this podcast. And I'm going to wish again that I could have gone back in time <laughs> and pushed myself down a staircase. It will always continue happening. But but seeing that progress could be really nice. Seeing that like, I don't know, looking at like the person I used to be and be like, man, that sucks. I don't ever want to go back to those times in my life. That's awful. But also, wow, look at that. I successfully got out of those places. I don't think like that anymore. I I don't know how to describe some stuff that I wrote in a positive light nowadays. Like, glad I, whatever that was, isn't now anymore. Um, and, like, you can see, like, the kind of, uh, like, you talk about, like, Itchy Bomber guy. Like, if you look at a video that he made today and look at forum posts he made 10 years ago, I, I bet you it's a night and day difference in the type of uh, approach he makes to communicating with other people. And likewise, like this to me, like seeing some stuff is a is a good approach to the way that I think as a person, the way that I think about like myself and interacting with other people. Um, it's always fun to see. And I, this would be hard to do if everything was so... If, if everything was uh, could just vanish at the drop of a hat, you know, like if you could just uh, if you just like threw away an entire account and moved on with life and just forgot what that account was. You're like, oh, I don't remember what username I used back in high school. It's gone now. Like. That's that's crazy to me. That's crazy that someone can just I still have my AOL account, like, like my first AOL account. I still have that. I still have access to that account. And all the emails in it and all of the like just everything. Wow, like, I, really? My, yeah. Like I, I don't I am terrified of losing anything that I've created on the Internet, except unless it's something that I hate so much that I'll remove it myself. But I don't want to just like let something vanish out of my own reach. 
So like, yeah, I own every account I've ever made. I have access to it. I have like my my poor last pass is just like such a mess. It sits there and carries <laughs> such a burden it doesn't want to where it's like, I don't even know what half these websites are if they're real anymore, but you've got accounts of them that you haven't changed the password in in like 15 years. Can you please? <laughs> and it's just it's like, and I don't yeah, yeah but it's but it, you know but i can yeah no. i could go to some stupid fucking drink mixer website log into my account and look at a post i made about like hey how do you make a sangria why did i need that i don't even remember why i needed that information and i don't know why i didn't just fucking google it why did i go into a whole forum to find out how to make a sangria i don't know but i have it it's there forever now it's mine i did that uh and I don't know. It's just it's neat. It's neat. The kind of catalog that there can be on the Internet. But the inverse here is that I I have access and control over that information. Right. And some people may not. Some people may lose access to their stuff. And so there can or, you know, there's a culture now of like memeing. So someone could post a dumb, embarrassing picture of themselves on the Internet and it will just forever be like like uh, what's the word I'm looking for encased in stone on the Internet. There's like some poor kid with a shitty school photo and forever he will be like ridiculed as an ugly kid. And I don't know, he probably doesn't look like that anymore. He probably looked like that 40 years ago, I bet at this point now. But, you know, and it's like that that sounds scary to me. The idea that you can make posts in such a long time ago and not have the control over access to it is what scares me. Like, I don't know, like a TikToker someone could just repost their videos or like post their videos in videos and now like they can't get rid of that video and video you know could be them doing some mm-hmm. kind of like cartwheel onto a dog and that just will haunt them for the rest of their life and no, it's like, like terrifying the idea of growing up with social media as a modern institution and being like oh wow me being an embarrassing teenager can literally make me like famous in the worst way <laughs> yeah and like my stuff like a live journal did nothing to me Like, no one was going to find this live journal and prop me up into stardom, right? It's, uh, so, like, I I got off easy. Like, same with it, shitty forum post. No one was going to take my garbage forum post and propel me into a new light. Uh, Even if they did, it, it, like, my name isn't really attached to it. It's just a username. And uh, even still... You know, at some point, like if it's so bad, you can, I guess, I don't know, uh, I guess I wouldn't get rid of it. But the point is that like you can it's still unlikely that someone would propel such isolated stuff to stardom like uh, you have now with social media where it's so much more efficient. It's actually like encouraged more like a forum doesn't encourage you to, to take a screenshot of someone's message. But Twitter does Twitter like actively the 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 culture of it is actively to like take pictures of what people say because it might go away and you got to keep that forever and you're like that's kind of scary i get it like yeah sometimes you it's good to have that information for like a bad actor or whatever but it's also still scary that someone could just have that about you know like he's blackmail folder for me he just has someone could just have that (laughs) on somebody for life just you know you can't escape that it's just there forever it's in my memes Uh, folder Oh, yeah, because you have memes, but like the idea that like someone could there's I bet you there's somebody who does like one of those Twitch stream uh, uh, Twitter posting shit where they're just on Twitter for like eight hours a day uh, record and and streaming themselves doing that. They probably have like a folder on their desktop of like all these screenshots of individual users. And it's probably organized and really creepily like meticulously built out. So that way, like. I don't know, someone shows up and says like, man, I can't believe John Madden says he doesn't like the feel of football on his fingers. He's like, oh, I got a tweet that he posted that he does. And he just like opens that folder <laughs> up and pulls that tweet and throws it on the Internet again. He's like, you'll never run Madden. You're lo- you love those footballs. And it's like, oh, God, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> like, fuck, man, that's brutal. Like the I don't know. I again, I, I look at posts that I made in high school and that's definitely definitely not a human being anymore that person's dead that person died so long ago and the the thought that someone could look at the that human that what that human said and uh, attach it to another is terrifying to me but they can't now because i've i've meticulously made sure they can't but regardless someone could you know and like that may happen now there may be a kid out there who's posting dumb hot takes on the internet 
and someone took a picture of it and is like, oh, just you wait, kid. In 10 years, I'm coming for you. And I don't know, that's, that's scary to me. How does, how do you like post stuff? How do you post some stuff with that kind of uh, longevity? But I guess, you know, when you're not famous, you don't think about it. When you, you know people aren't paying attention to you, you can get away with whatever. Um, but now. You know who can't get away with anything? Or with, at least with He's, this thing. It's Keith. Keith. He can't get Keith. away. He can't. <laughs> mm. Tell your story, Keith. If... <laughs> we've, we've given you a lot of lead <laughs> time. The, the anxiety has lowered now. Let's, let's get into I was, it. I got distracted. I was reading your old blog post. <laughs> what are you doing? Get the fuck off my blog post. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Seriously. I just wasn't get ready away. to hear the... I wasn't ready to hear about Rob, Arnie, and Don. <laughs> Like, oh God wow, damn it, man! Fucking forgot Dude, about it, them. <laughs> Facebook still reminds me of that. Facebook like will sh just randomly show up, like, "Hey, do you want to go back and listen to them? I they have a podcast now." I'm like, I don't care. I don't you remember listen Rob, Hardy, and Don. They sold mugs. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one of their cookbooks. It's actually pretty good, though. Uh, I don't like the people, but I will admit that Rob makes a really good turkey, and he he has a good recipe for it. But... I can taste it through the radio. Exactly, I can taste it through the radio. His politics are shit, uh, but his cooking sublime. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't remember any of that anymore. It's uh, it's not great. It was really uh, it's funny because I, I I think back on it now and I like especially I can hear um, what was it? I can uh, I can remember exactly the kind of philosophy that each character had, which is why the show worked. Um, and realizing like in my head, like oh no, like you have a a staunch pull up by your bootstraps hyper capitalist kind of guy who's like low on you know he's like very low on uh government reach but very big on corporate uh or like uh, entrepreneurship like the idea that everyone should be able to make a lot of money but also it doesn't matter if you know like people suffer from poverty um and then you have someone who's just like i don't know intrinsically ingrained in very uh in very old uh easily proven to be racist views but uh like you just don't want to admit that you have these kind of views like you don't want to admit that it's you that's the problem you want to just live in the fantasy that everyone else is just misinterpreting uh and then you have someone who just doesn't exist as a person i don't know how you describe them they just like flounder about with their ideas they don't they don't lean one way or the other. They just kind of like perfectly encapsulate uh, like conservatism. They just like, what? sure, whatever that person says, I agree with today. That person's wrong. Nope, never mind. I flipped over. Like, it's just like this weird wishy-washy level. And so it works perfectly. You have two people that are uh, like each side is in the same. They're all in the same side, right? On the political spectrum. But the nice part is that they're all the different like parts of it. So you have someone who's in the dead center and then it gets like, ah, eh, they're kind of in the middle. And then, Oh, that's a little too far for me. And like, you can just, but it's never, it never goes to the opposite side, right? It always stays on one particular side of the spectrum. So you have this perfect, you feel like you're getting a lot of different views, but you're only getting a lot of different views from one side. Um, and that's Rob Barney and Don. And then that is a very common strategy. And then, uh, I didn't realize well, I was like, Arnie, awakening something. <laughs> and then Arnie tried to kill himself, and so he got off the show. <laughs> Whoa. And so uh, then that ended. Um, yeah, that spiraled into a bad. He like got a uh, very, very, very unhealthy mental state, and then kind of like he just was kicked off the show, basically, and then turned into like a general radio host. But I think he just never fit in anywhere else, and I don't know what he's doing with his life anymore because I don't listen to radio because I live in the future where i can just pay for non-commercial entertainment without bad people i just want to listen to rock music i don't care about talk shows <laughs> you say that do you do you listen do you listen uh in, in spotify perchance uh no i don't i don't use oh. spotify uh i use youtube music for because because spotify is not great I would write, like well, especially because I try to listen to anime music, and I don't want to. Spotify oh, doesn't have a whole that. lot there. Yeah, yeah. 
Spotify is only good for podcasts, basically. I have, I do have a Spotify account. You say good, but hmm? you yeah, say good. It is. it is good. It has a lot of really good true crime podcasts that don't exist anywhere else for some reason. Like they're not on YouTube and they're not oh. on like any kind of other like platform. They're just wait. You dedicated. listen to true crime? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I, of course, I listen to true Here crime. And here I was thinking that I watching accidents on on YouTube was a bad thing, and I was saying the other podcast. What? I was saying, oh, it's even what my my guilty pleasure is even worse than Andrew. You listen to true crime, that's even worse than accidents, car car crashes. I mean, true crime is like the lowest of the spectrum of what I engage with. I am like, <laughs> like when it comes to to people dying, I've watched it all. Like that's my whole field. I've like serial killers all the way to just like. I don't know what you'd call them, monsters. I've been there. I watched it all. Because the serial killers are not. I like. I like the implication. <laughs> well, there's there's like it's like you 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 learn very quickly that like serial killers are like they're insane, very bad people. But there's somebody who lives above them, like a like a what is it like a Cthulhu level where you're like, oh god, there's like an unknowable, unspeakable beast that's even worse somehow than the worst that we could possibly comprehend as a person. And you're like, oh good, those are just hanging around in the shadows for some reason awesome and that's definitely why live leak doesn't exist anymore because <laughs> those people are not great petering but true dangerously fun. close to the <laughs> abyss that is andrew's soul yeah uh let's, but yeah let's... true crime is really fun because you get to see uh it's kind of like cooking shows where you get to see a uh, a wide range of how uh what what are you laughing about <laughs> it's true it's true like look it's true kind of like it is it is it's it like is cooking is shows like cooking where show. two really flamboyant and colorful people are weirdly tone deaf about the thing they're presenting from what i've yeah. seen in modern true crime yeah exactly and so but you also have people who take it really and like really maturely and seriously like i follow a person who does a really good job of laying all the facts. He doesn't like, he doesn't dox people. Cause that's for some reason, a problem with true crime. They'll just say like outright say victims or whatever's like full names or where they live and stuff. And it's like, uh, <laughs> they're still alive. <laughs> like maybe don't do that. Um, there's like, and there, I've seen people like a guy I follow is really good about it. He like tell, you know, he gives you all the stuff heads up. Like this is what's in the episode. Like this is what we're going to be talking about. This is where the location is. You know, these are the people involved. They like he gives backstories to both the uh, perpetrator and the victim. So you're not just it's not like just a a weird like and then the bad guy showed up. You're like, no, nah, this this is a person. This is what happened to make a person do this. Like they're these are human beings committing crimes with human beings. Like they're not just weird, you know, like spectral boogeymen who just crawl out of the ground and start committing crimes. Um hmm. But yeah, then you have like the fun ones where they show up and like, hey, party time. Someone got 13 killed and they like blow up confetti and like doing disco dances and whatnot. And they're like, mm, he stabbed her mm, in the heart. And you're like, man, this is oh. a, a weird way to produce information about murder. But uh, <laughs> all right, let's go. <laughs> like, um, And, you know, it's kind of like, seen, like you, banners and stuff that look like YouTube thumbnails that are hyper colorful and and like mugging for the camera where it looks like they're going to open toy boxes or something. But it's like she, and it's like <laughs> 17 dead. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Those are great. I love these. those. I don't know what the I've fuck. Never never yeah, like true so crime. All I did was watch listen to seri uh, season one and, uh, and two of Serial and that was it. That was all of true crime podcasts for me. Mm. There's yeah, they're like a. Uh, it, it's it's a it's a really fun field there's a lot of uh there's a lot a lot like such a huge spectrum of how people deliver such horrifying news um and it again it can be it can be a really good insight into uh just how what's the word like how numb people can be to this thing like uh, like the concept of serial killers isn't isn't like old it sounds like it would be old. Like I'm sure we just, the we concept just live in a of world murdering, where we're just given bad news every day. Yeah, but like, so the concept of serial killing isn't new. Obviously, people killed each other, and I would argue that people killed each other in pretty huge groves. Uh, the further you keep going back, but the concept, like the the general, um, you know, like the general premise of serial killing, is a more modern concept than 
you it's would also a very then, american you, concept you would well be, yeah we invented serial killers like that that was us we did it good job guys uh who saved the day um yeah that we were the <laughs> we were technically the ones who were like pointed out and went hey wait a second what is that guy doing over there <laughs> um and it was it's fun killing? it's yeah it's it, it was really it's really yeah. fun to learn about serial killing like as a concept because it's such a it it goes from like a pseudoscience to like a national problem really quickly where you're like i don't know man i don't think people just kill each other indiscriminately that sounds crazy and you're like oh shit a lot of people are doing this this is a kind of a problem we should focus on this like poor fbi just shows up and is like suddenly in the thralls of being uh expected to solve what was once like uh I, let's not talk about this small city crime and now it's like well we can't really overlook the fact that a guy you know like is killing a lot of people uh in a lot of short time period and he kind of is doing it pretty uh what's the word um consistently, consistently. yeah he's doing it pretty consistently even uh even though we try to you know tell him to stop publicly hey stop that dude dude <laughs> well, i don't well, know speaking it's a... of true crime prod podcasts uh finally max max damages uh prompt was you walk outside and see the sky is no longer blue <sighs> i remember thinking it's already been 10 minutes we've already wasted 10 minutes i've got to start <laughs> <laughs> 50 minutes how the fuck all right <clears throat> Cassidy rubbed furiously at his arms as he walked, not because the young man was cold, but because the small western town he'd grown up in now repulsed him. He strode among the houses with rigid shoulders, glancing wide-eyed between them as if he expected they'd move after two decades of waiting patiently. Fuck it. He couldn't stay here tonight. Cassidy couldn't bear to hold these streets in his life for a moment longer than he had to. He'd go home, gather anything worth carrying, and never look back. The young man would figure out the rest as he went but he would never return. There was nothing left for him here. As he turned the corner onto his home street, he backpedaled in shock so clumsily that he slid to the ground. Shit. Choking on his own dust cloud, he scrambled to crawl back behind cover. Back pressed to the wall, ice in his veins, he strained to hear whether he'd been seen over the music of his own heart in his ears. Flared. That crooked son of a bitch was waiting for Cassidy at his own home, and he brought his boys. Never figured the grunt for a killer, honestly. Yeah, suppose that's how he thinks he got away with it, dimwit. Oh, come on, you think he'd come back after a show like that? Oh, he'll be back. Just you wait. That was it. Cassidy's decision had been made for him whether he had truly meant it before or not. He ran his fingers through his hair, which trembled as the weight of the situation really hit him. Laird was on the hunt, and the boy had to make tracks right now or find his neck wrung on a lead wrought of false justice. He rose, resigned his final goodbyes to anything material he had left to care about, and launched himself in the opposite direction. Cassidy stopped for no one. He felt many a questioning stare on his back, even heard a shout or two, but he just kept running. Buildings slid by like great lumbering beasts. He didn't bother looking up to check where he was going anymore. The town had to end eventually, had to be humbled by the world beyond, and that was all that mattered anymore. Human sprawl seemed to go on forever, but then it ended all at once, surrendering to nature's grand expanse. Cassidy still didn't have a plan, but he had to keep moving. He wouldn't let anyone drag him back in there. Checking the afternoon sun, the choice was obvious. It would break his heart to watch the burning harbinger fall. And so he set his back to it, running east. With the star burning at his neck, he had more reason than ever never to turn back. As much as he wished it wouldn't, his mind drifted back to when his world shattered. Flashback. <laughs> Squinting through the midday sun, Cassidy struggled to see anything in the abyss beyond the barred window. Tom! He shouted his whisper. Are you in there? You shouldn't be here. The big man's voice felt smaller somehow, both familiar and new. It hurt to hear. Where else would I be? You and I both know you didn't do it. They say you were the last one seen with her, but we were together the whole time. Let me just talk to the sheriff and we can set this whole mess straight. Don't you dare. Tom was trying to build himself up. 
to make his words stern and final, but there was a quiver to them. Do you have any idea what that would do to me, to my family? You're not saying a goddamn word to anyone. Your family? Tom, they're going to hang you at sundown. And you're going to walk away. What? He couldn't accept what he was hearing. You not hear me? Sundown, Tom. You're not spending the night in here. They're going to string you up like they're in a hurry or something. The man bristled at needing to repeat himself. I heard fine. Cassidy's voice cracked at this. Tom, this is wrong. You can't make me do this. You don't know what it'll do to me. You say one goddamn word and I will never forgive you. I'll have nothing left. You'd have me. Cassidy slid his arm through the bars, vision blurred by welling tears. His hand stretched for Tom, reaching to move the man, shake him from his fate, to hold his oldest friend. The cowboy only turned away in silence. Back to modern day. Cassidy's chest heaved, his breath long since turned sharp as his lungs stiffened. He felt like he'd been running for hours, his legs chafed in his pants. His neck burned red and he didn't care to see what state his boots had left his feet in. Nothing mattered but distance. He had no water, no destination, but he'd sooner die out here than set foot in that town again. He yelped as his ankle wrenched awfully and the desert rose eagerly to meet him, slamming into his face. He lay there a moment, fingers dragging through the dirt until they balled into fists, struggling not to fall apart. Cassidy stood slowly, testing his leg. He hissed through clenched teeth as the damage throbbed against his weight. His chances just got a whole lot slimmer. The boy hobbled for what felt like another hour, his progress reduced to an agonizing crawl. He fully expected some opportunistic wildlife to take a liking to him, but instead was soon drawn to the ghost of a noise. It was nearly imperceptible at first, but the clamor rose as he pushed on. He tried not to notice how long his shadow was getting. Always in front of him, it was getting harder and harder to miss. Finally cresting over an unfamiliar path, the horizon filled with water. A wide river at last answering his ear's attraction. Cassidy collapsed beside it, unsure if it was safe to drink, but more than relieved at the chance to cool his face. The surface calmed to unveil his own reflection, and when he stared down at his own imitation, something finally broke. Sobbing horribly with the cry of a wounded animal, Cassidy's tears returned what he stole. And how am I ever supposed to forgive you? Flashback. Tom blinked as his vision adjusted from the early morning light to the shaded interior of his favorite establishment. The familiar place, however, was not manned by the familiar face. You've got the saloon today, Rose? He scanned around, the regular host nowhere to be seen. In fact, the whole place was suspiciously empty. Evie not make it or something? I haven't got a clue. Y'all stay up late last night, run my girl ragged? I, uh, <clears throat> we... Tom cleared his throat when it caught. Cassidy took over. Tom was soaked through, so I had to drag his dumb ass home early. Rose cocked an eyebrow at that as he served them the usual. Big Tom went under the table? Y'all must have been hitting the hard stuff without me. They hadn't. You'll be liable to make a girl feel left out. Tom gulped down his early drink, clearly not comfortable with their lie. Well, uh, we'll, we'll be sure you get the full show next time, Rose. The three enjoyed their late morning silence for a few minutes until it shattered with the slam of the front door. There he is, that son of a bitch. Laird bellowed the alarm as bodies flowed past him into the room. For a moment, Tom was lost in a sea of hands as they punched and grappled with him, one man against an overwhelming tide. You'll get what's coming for you for what you did to poor Evie. Her own parents couldn't recognize her. Mouth agape, Cassidy could only shake his head slowly in shock as he watched. Tom slammed into the door frame, winded on the impact. Creatures that Cassidy no longer recognized tore at the man's clothes, hauling him away. The expression on Tom's face shook the young man to his core. It was the first time he'd seen him afraid. Modern day. I say modern day, it's the same day. Later that day. Now. <laughs> Feeling thoroughly defeated and lost in the memory, Cassidy was only shaken from his stupor when a, a cold shadow eclipsed his spot on the shoreline. Whirling from where he kneeled, revealed an entire stagecoach that had managed to sneak up on him while he was numb to the world. 
With a pang, he wished he had failed to notice the sun had fallen low enough to be blocked by the vehicle. The door swung open. I wouldn't drink that if I were you, boy. The older man stared back at him, soft and well-kept. He looked as if he'd never struggled a day in his life. What in the blazes are you doing all the way out here without a horse? You run into some kind of trouble? Yeah, something like that. Well, get in already. I've got a schedule to keep, but we can drop you in the next town. He gestured wildly, seemingly annoyed that Cassidy had not anticipated his hospitality. Standing carefully on his swelling ankle, he glanced at the horse's bearing. They weren't heading back towards the goddamn sun, so wherever he ended up would have to be good enough. Flashback. You ever wonder if we'd be better off back east? Evie was getting all wistful again. She always did that when she was drunk. Cassidy blinked at the question. What, uh, paved roads and shit? <laughs> Her scarlet curls bounced as she laughed. It was the kind of noise you could only steal with a surprise. Yeah, I suppose. Paved roads and shit. Reckon it's a lot harder to clean horse leavings out of the cobble or brick or whatever that, than it is to clear out of dirt. He was really out of clever things to say with this many drinks in. Sure, I'm not exactly looking to do that no matter where I'm living. Evie performatively cleaning out a glass to prove her point. Nah, you're too good for to sweep streets. I'm sure you've got a foolproof plan to land yourself in pocket watches and petticoats. Cassidy only said that because it felt good on the tongue. He had no idea what a petticoat was. And what exactly do you think a petticoat is, Cassidy? Damn it. <laughs> oh, what do you know? He slapped Tom on the back, whose face rose from the bar with a bleary grunt. Looks like it's past my boy's bedtime. We'd, we'd best be getting on. You boys done already? It can't be an hour past sundown yet. Her mock dejectedness was, inf it was infectious. We got the whole place to ourselves, and you're going to cut out early. Cassie slid un in under Tom's arm and grunted as he strained to lift him. And yet you've... <clears throat> You've already served us enough to tranquilize this bear here. I've got to get him out of here before you somehow make him heavier. All right, y'all take care now. Progress towards the door quickly proved difficult work. Whoa, whoa, you're going to have to help me out here, big guy. This is like trying to tr carry a horse over a river. Tom's response was unintelligible. Cassidy sobered up a bit when the door opened to reveal a face twisted in awful glare. Ugh, uh... Evening, Laird. The pair lumbered clumsily past the man, both eager to be rid of him. Asshole. The boy said it under his breath, but when he looked back over the expanse between them, he saw Laird still staring at them. Cassidy shivered, but not from the cold. Shit, he couldn't know, could he? They were always so careful. Afraid to look again, he trudged on. Tom mercifully regained some clarity as they walked, slowly removing his weight from the smaller man. He was walking on his own by the time they reached his porch. You got it from here, Tom? I, I can head... Oh! A strong arm herded Cassidy inside. He always hoped an evening would end like this, but he never knew when it was coming. Calloused hands fumbled at his clothes as they'd done many times before, and he tried to push from his mind the worry that Tom would only do this when he was proper drunk. Falling onto the mattress, their limbs entangled in a mess of ragged gasps as they sweated through the sheets. Back to now. End of the road, boy. The old man shuffled to open the way out of the stagecoach. Thank you, sir. I I wish I had a way to pay. You cost me nothing and you owe me nothing, but hurry along. I have to be on my way. Stealing himself with nothing more than a weary sigh, Cassidy stepped into the light. He found that he didn't need to shield his eyes from the glare of the outside world. The sky was no longer blue. That's it. You Ow. left us. <clears throat> I I um. That one kept busy for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that was good. I I like the. Uh... Oh man, that you did good with the like all the details and the and how it lends to the the fact that you're negrating. So it's difficult to fall. It's more difficult than just reading. But the, there's a lot of details going on, and you always hover over over. The, what eventually is the reveal, almost at the end as well. Hmm. Because you're like, what did they do? What did they do? What's going on? Yeah, right? definitely. Is that, like, that the intention? I definitely like structured the entire thing in reverse order. Mm -hmm. Or I, uh, 
I out when I when I figured out the timeline, I definitely started at the ending and rode backwards, and then I split it into. I've 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 been, I've been dealing with some fiction lately that I might actually end up writing about later uh, as as video essays or whatever. But like, I've been really interested in the unveiling of information and how that can make a story compelling in a way that uh, Final Fantasy XIV's Realm Reborn or Kingdoms of Amalur do not, because they just are like, I will now sit down and explain the story to you, and like that's not what makes a story <laughs> compelling. Like yeah. Yeah, like fucking uh, I, like I went through a visual novel that had like shockingly good information revealing. I'm like, what the fuck? Everything should work this way. Or like how uh, the 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 first serialized Witcher book, uh, not not the, the short story ones, but the beginning of the Witcher saga. It opens with Dandelion, a side character uh, spurning an audience to debate whether or not his stories are real. And I'm like, that's a fucking incredible opening. So I was like really mm -hmm. fixated on like, how do you unveil information in a way that may, that raises questions instead of just fucking telling a story in the most logical way, which is the worst way usually. But it, it was a headache yeah, well, to yeah. format. <laughs> I'll, put, I, the, I like I'll the, put all of our stories in the description somewhere or something so you can actually read them because the narration is messy. I wish you had I hate I wish the the I wish you had dwelled dwelled a little bit more. But like your pacing is really good. I th I think better at the beginning than later on. Um you, you start to hover going up and down a little in terms of the pacing. <clears throat> but the pacing of the, the the what you're telling is very good at, like easily for the first half. Um, and I wish, I wish the, I wish the, the, basically when Tom pulls, uh, Cassidy to, I suppose, like a house or a, an alleyway, I wish you had dwelled a little bit more and slowed down and described a few more things. Cause that's the payoff though. Like that's, <clears throat> that's where, um, like that's the reveal. So you could, I, I suppose if yeah, I had to I was, fo I was focusing on the reveal more so than like, let's turn this into a romance novel. <laughs> But it's also a memory, right? Like he's recalling yeah. things, so it makes sense for him to, for him to just dwell there. But they, yeah, they, like they, they the, arrived at Tom's house because they specifically arrive at his porch. Uh, but oh, like, right, yeah, right. it's it's so much messier to try to narrate it and then have everyone retain that that way. Yeah. So I'll put I'll put the the text somewhere. Gotta just make a uh, make like a paste bin or something for it, and then just. Flapping yeah, into the or a dry yeah. description or something. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, I like the I like that the the premise that the the general uh topic is not uh is not the leading in for the story. Like you save it to the very end. Um, that's mm -hmm. always fun. So like it's not a it's not the focus. Like people aren't focused on the premise. It's just the like just did the story. final line did the final line land like did you understand what it meant yeah no i, uh, I got I, I got exactly why you saved it to the end i just meant that it's nice that like yet like you were talking no, I mean, about because that was my that, worry is that it would, i would say the sky is no longer blue and then it just ends and I'm like what the fuck does that mean what do you mean it's <laughs> over <laughs> well the Shit. world isn't the same um i i assume the setting is like uh frontier times like 1800s um, so, like, uh, Cassidy is outed at the moment, and he's in a different town, so, th like, there's multiple interpretations, I suppose, that you could take. That he's away from Tom. Uh, actually, what, what happened to Tom? Did you describe that? <laughs> it's exactly what I was worried about. No! <laughs> <laughs> he got yeah. taken, right? He just it got might taken. it might be easier to follow in text form. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. uh, no, uh, the character Evie, after they, uh, so Tom was uh was jailed for the murder of Evie and was going to be hung that night. It was going to be hung at sun oh, at yeah, sundown, right. which I added more reminders to earlier on because I'm like, this isn't remind this isn't like set up enough time. So I added more more mentions to it where they doubled back in the conversation to try to reinforce it. So the reason why mm -hmm. there's such an obsession obsession over the sun throughout the entire story is not just a place where the where the flashback versus modern day stuff is because yeah, all the flashbacks are in chronological order themselves. But I'm I'm sorry the. Uh, 
The modern day scenes are in chronological order and all of the flashbacks are in reverse chronological order. So the first flashback is the most recent b before he went home and then ran away. And then each mm -hmm. one gets further and further back, revealing more and more that like, oh, shit. OK, so here's here's Tom in jail. Here's Tom being taken. Uh, here's them uh, hanging out with Evie the night before, mm -hmm. which they said in the other scene was the last time. That's they claim that Tom was the last one that saw her. And that was the that was when they previously saw them. Laird was hunting uh Laird was hunting Cassidy at his home at the beginning of the story and mm -hmm. you realize that uh that Laird was the last person that saw Evie because he was going into the bar as they left. Mm -hmm. And so Tom was hung at sundown. That's the point of the sky no longer being blue is the uh, the reason why he's running from oh. the sun and refusing to look at it and afraid of his his growing shadow and why it's so significant that the that the sun is no that the sky is no longer blue is that it's sundown so the all of the modern day scenes are the are the last of the day dwindling away at which point tom is executed oh i see and that explains and why that you were was saying a that struggle you, it, to format <laughs> yeah oh I, yeah I, I like the i that's what i was going to say is i like the idea that you uh you talked about earlier that you kind of you foregoed all of the the obvious answers here like apocalypse and uh some kind of uh end of the world type yeah. problem with the sky but turning a different color world. than blue yeah but the idea that uh that just because the sky is no longer blue doesn't yeah it doesn't necessarily mean that the sky uh that there is something wrong on a global scale like yeah yeah yeah, yeah like the sky Stop does change all the day yeah, it's not it's not always blue. It can change to various colors. Uh, so yeah, using it as a as a signifier of a time of day change was really good. That was really uh, as a really fun um, fun ending to be like ah, the day is over. Um, I want would it would it work if the flashbacks were in chronological order? Um, like if you told the story without flashbacks. No, no, just, you know, because my problem was, like, I couldn't identify that they were in chronological order while I was listening to them. Like, I only got that, I knew yeah. that they weren't necessarily in the right order, but, like, what's going on at what time was difficult for me to follow. Uh, so I think if they were in chronological order, I think there are some things that would have had it to change. It makes me think you have to, like, narr that you have to, like, write differently for narration, essentially. I was gonna yeah, say every I single think scene. Ex yeah. Every single scene explains when it's taking place. I was gonna say, reading through it right now, you it, have to it catch is. All of them. <laughs> it's 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 understandably structured. You would know that you're in a flashback, and you know mm -hmm. when the flashback's taking place. But I think uh, verbally hearing it out loud, yeah. it's a little bit harder to under, to like keep your bearings. And I think that's like that makes sense. I think that's a very big. I would say that's a pretty good literary hurdle in general. That's why I was, I was trying to. Once I wrote it, I was like, I was really worried. I'm like, oh fuck, this isn't gonna work whenever when I read it. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the jail scene starts with with uh, squinting through the midday sun, uh, and then the uh, scene where Tom is taken. It says Tom blinked as his vision adjusted from the early morning light to the shaded interior of his favorite establishment. And then you reinforce that after a little bit, saying the yeah. last things of the morning his early dream yeah, the, yeah most flashbacks start with a time <clears throat> and of then day, the conversation so with evie is them the night before because it's 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 uh it's it says that it's now it's like an hour after sundown mm -hmm. you're slowly going backwards in time also evie's alive so you know it's earlier uh, than the scene where she's dead <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that, that does help yeah yeah just like how you know that tom is being seized is before the time that he was in jail but uh, mm -hmm. it's just, it's a lot to just process on the fly. Why mm -hmm. someone would just like write a chronological story if they were going to read it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, in the way I, I'm conceptualizing my own story, I'm very aware that I'm going to have to read it out loud. And I'm seeing things that like, oh, from the beginning, I'm seeing things that just doesn't, don't work. And because I, I like, I like to play around. I like I like well, the thing that I, the stuff that I write when I write, it is meant to be read uh, and rather than spoken. And, uh, and I'm not used to, to writing uh, for, for speech. It's, it's very different. You're, you're, uh, I think you started out with, um, like you're the big, I could tell at the beginning that you were using more 
florally senten uh, structured sentences at the beginning. They, they, there were a couple that were really nice uh, that I was like, oh, that's that's really beautiful. Um, about the boots, there was one with the boots that was, ah, that's great. That's a great line. Uh, but then later on, you start, you stop ha doing that as much. And I, I wonder why. Was it just because you wanted to focus on the action? Uh, I mean, there's a... Uh... <clears throat> it's hard to break up the dialogue. So whenever there's dialogue, mm -hmm. it's hard to like keep pausing for big stuff though. But uh what is it? Uh it, I lost it. I don't remember the name. Oh yeah, uh Cassidy's chest heaved, his breath long since turned sharp as his lungs stiffened. And then later it's uh his neck burned red and he didn't care to see what state his boots had left his feet in. Yeah, that one. That one was like, you could just like slap me twice. And I didn't even see it coming. Because it's, felt... got, it's got it, like a setup and a kicker. <laughs> it's like a whole thing. <laughs> I was all full of myself when I wrote that his, uh, what is it? Cassidy's tears returned what they stole. <laughs> I, yeah, the I didn't get that one. I was so fucking full of myself. <laughs> Eh, I didn't get. I didn't get that that's one. That's fine. Because he he splashed water on his face, and then he cried back into the river. Oh, oh yeah, I did get. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I forgot what it meant. I, I at the, in the moment I understood what it meant. I think you're pretty it was, good. Uh, it's a be. fun exercise. Yeah, it's always. Yep. It is a lot of fun to have to flex your creative muscles sometimes. Trying to run the trying to run the tightrope between like. Phrasing things creatively and trying to make it compelling, but also not being Wilder myth, <laughs> where you're like, what the fuck did he say? <laughs> like so much of yeah. the Wilder myth narration, you're like, Douglas, what are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck was that sentence? You have, I think you had only <clears throat> one half constructed sentence in the whole thing. Right at the end, there was somebody, oh yeah, I, uh, we, Tom cleared his throat when it caught. That's the only sentence that you didn't finish. Mm -hmm. And Wilder Myth just doesn't finish sentence. Because that's the point of that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like, uh, I think, I think, uh, <clears throat> that, that Wilder Myth is fucking weird. It is, because I think it's meant to, uh, an easy trap to fall into. I, I noticed this, the very first story I tried to write in the, after figuring that I couldn't write dialogue for shit, which is what happens to everyone that starts writing, uh, because it's, uh, it's practice. It's not just, liking dialogue so the the moment i figured out i couldn't write dialogue what i did is oh how would people talk and then i i tried talking myself and guess what i'm stuttering all the time oh that's yeah. how people talk then and i really write down people stuttering no that's not how people talk <laughs> like i'm not stuttering right now i'm saying stuff but if i'm like making stuff up at the same time as i'm saying things then yeah i stutter that's how you spot people lying i mean one way anyway mm-hmm <laughs> So it just comes across as people lying. Wilder Moth, I mean. Why did you choose the name Laird? What is that? <laughs> I literally what? looked up a, le a, le a list of old Western names. <clears throat> and just went... <clears throat> and what, God damn, I literally just got a cough drop and it's not helping. <clears throat> but they're like different different Western names. I didn't... I was following my own rule of not, rep of not repeating the first letter in anyone's names. Mm -hmm. And just name... Laird? And, Laird is a really, I'm so sorry, anyone in the audience, but Laird <laughs> is a really douchey name. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. But so that, Cassidy like, it was just the first name that came to mind when I thought of that setting. Yeah. I, I like the names. Uh, they're memorable. Well, Tom is kind of not necessarily the, the most imaginative, imaginative name. Yeah. It was Cassidy, but... Tom, Laird, Evie, and Rose. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Rose also. Yeah, it sticks. I think I think the big challenge though is um, is Laird specifically. His name needs to. There's a big span between him being introduced and then later on. I think that's the biggest span of all the names. So it's a memorable enough name for that. <laughs> you would remember. Oh, it's <laughs> that weird name that I've never heard. I think Laird is the name of. Let's see. Laird. Wikipedia Gears people named of Laird. War. Are you sure it's pronounced like that as well? By Are the there way, there a guy named Laird in Gears of War. One of the, it's one of the main. I'm thinking of Baird, aren't I? 
Yeah. Oh no, yeah. that's weird. The smart guy, the smart insufferable guy in uh, the Gears of War series named Baird. Laird so, Giverney. So name. Baird is pronounced Baird, then Laird is probably Laird. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not like in any authority to question. Yep. No the uh, Google pronounced Laird supports Laird. On Wikipedia for Laird, open parentheses, given name, close parentheses. <laughs> the younger, the youngest person there is um, an American author and poet called Laird Barron, which is actually that, that sounds good. Laird Barron, that's a that's a good name. <laughs> a villain. I name. like that. Laird. Let me see. Let me look into uh, what he does. Oh, he's from Alaska, right? That explains it. What? You know the name. <laughs> Because isn't Alaska like a really old timey kind of place? I don't know anything about Alaska besides. I don't think so. I think things. it's just a. I think it's just an empty place. I think just a lot of people struggle to live There's there. There's people in Alaska. Barely, the majority of Alaska is is much like Canada is not lived in. There's just like a small pocket of Alaska that has people in it, and the rest is this unbearably mean wild uh, wildlands that just kind of exists i guess and I mean, we're winning the fight the woods. we're killing the planet enough that we'll wipe that stupid ecosystem out eventually but it's still there taunting us every day where is yeah i think um i think there's like a what, thing so, so the other thing is like i i mentioned uh that th there's a lot of details that you put in even though the, the story is sort of focused on one particular thing. Um, like, one of the details was the desert. The moment you mentioned the desert, uh, like, it starts, the it picture gets better in my head. And, it, and a, lot of the, a lot of the descriptions do the same, because at the, at the beginning, I'm like, oh, this is suburban America. He's just in the street, <laughs> like, on a bicycle, or on a motor bicycle or something. But, no, it's... it's uh, Old time it's my said. least creative description probably is when I just straight up say in the first sentence old uh, small western town because <laughs> I was like I gotta I gotta establish something but also not just sit here and talk about the setting for a paragraph no but that's good though because it I, I, I well at least I like the effect because it, it keeps the the reader sort of you know it, it doesn't center the reader easily enough and so you can have a simpler story that is still interesting because you're 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 not sure where you're headed so you're paying attention to all these loose plots of whether you know the, the, the town is east and town like there's this moment where he turns back around and I'm like why did you mention his heading um and I, it turns out it's because of the water thing right he's turning uh, away from the sun mhm mm oh yeah well, that's uh, the whole dynamic of the so story it would telling. break his heart to watch that burning harbinger fall I didn't get that line. The sun. The, 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 when the sun sets, Tom gets executed. <laughs> the harbinger of Tom's the execution. Sun is the, That's why. Yeah. Is the, like, yeah. As the sun sets, it, gets, it just, and he can't it's stop yes. it. It just gets closer. Yeah. Checking mm -hmm. the afternoon sun, the choice was obvious. It would break his heart to watch that burning harbinger fall. So he set his back to it running east. Mm -hmm. As the sun sets in the west. Unless... No. <laughs> no. There's no exceptions to that. <laughs> Something's very wrong if that doesn't happen. <laughs> There's books written about like, that stuff. This isn't, this isn't like toilets flush the other way. It's like, nope. Still, still west in Australia. <laughs> the funny thing about the toilets is that it's true, but it's also false. Did you know? Sure. <laughs> So basically, the biggest of the biggest uh, modifier, not toilets, just any sink or any like drain, uh, the biggest modifier for whether it's counterclockwise or clockwise, uh, how a water or how the water goes down the drain, isn't actually the rotation of the planet, even though it is a factor. The biggest modifier is just the shape of the drain. So, so like you can have two toilets on side by side, and one of them goes left, and the other ones goes right, because of the way they're like the imperfections of the, how the water goes. That's the biggest modifier. So you need like a extremely controlled environment to even be able to tell, and it's possible to tell. Yes, they do tend to go one the, the other way. 
I, and that's why the sun just, sets in the east. I guess I just mm -hmm. never knew Isn't that. It? The song I was thinking I, of is, I know that it's Californication, right? There's a, a line about Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, there's a line something about the sun setting in the east or something. That song is good. Fight me. Is that the da -da -da California Cation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything else. So all I remember is that line, <laughs> that one word. The sun may rise in the east. Oh no, it's the other way around. <laughs> okay, it's confirmed. That was a dangerous bet you made, and you were and you lost. <laughs> I, I did. Oh. It doesn't feel as bad as having forgotten my homework, though. Well, don't do feel we bad because read... you've been given you've been given an extended time to do it. <laughs> I was going to ask, do we want to read it next week, or a is homework it Andrew? Extension, or is it Andrew? I don't know. Next do we week? podcast or do we Andrew? I don't know. I don't. I don't have things figured out. Do you want two stories? All I, know is in one I don't podcast? have to do it anymore. I win. You did. <laughs> you did win. Yeah, uh, I... I'm fine with uh, doing. My story this week, if you want. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. Probably. How do I increase? You should the probably size? have it up there so I can go. read it. Mm -hmm. uh, no, oh, was, if you yeah, could. Actually, mm -hmm. this this you could link it to us as well, so we can read along. Because people in yeah. people are going to be watching and doing that, unless they're not doing that. If you would like that give me a moment sorry that i didn't think of that keith before you started reading <laughs> <laughs> one moment up and then because it's important uh, uh i love word uh let's see oh I no he to... uses word <laughs> yeah i i why wouldn't i use uh, word uh, is word not good? When did that no. happen? Isn't word Every like time. The, the, the default? LibreOffice for uh, the win or death. Libre Actually, there's Libre there's much better ones, but there's so. LibreOffice. You use OpenOffice? Yeah. Oh, LibreOffice is a is a fork. Oh, it's a, the same open source. It's like OB, OBS, Stream mm -hmm. Labs. <laughs> Oh no no no! It's uh, it's the other way around actually. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Well, Libra was first. No, Libra was second, but it's with the original developers because they split up. It's weird. It's like this whole thing, you know, drama from nerds. Thank you, nerds, for making the best. Nerd drama. They're not listening. They're, They're listen always angry things. about something. <laughs> what is it this week? <laughs> Why, who, what is these squiggly lines, by the way, Keith? Uh, I literally looked up, like, ASCII wind. <laughs> ASCII wind. <laughs> I just, I wanted more than just a larger line break to show the, uh, the time skips. I did a little ASCII uh, wind thing that's just like I, a yeah, squiggle. Yeah, I figured... I didn't know they were wind. I just figured that they were like line breaks to. Yeah, it's just a stylization. They look like the sound of flashbacks that Andrew has. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But unfortunately, mine does not have flashbacks in it, so uh, I won't get to use my flashback soundboard. Okay. Uh, let's see. Finishing. You'll have to settle for now. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Which one? You want the Roblox or Minecraft? What? Oh, um, is that from Roblox? Ooh, Sounds like a kid the, being oh, shoved. That's that's oh, the, Roblox. Ooh. That's Minecraft. <laughs> I like the Minecraft. I, I better. thought that was older than that. I didn't know it was from Roblox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, so where did I toss this shit to? I need did to get one of those your, things for Did me. you lose your story? Huh? No, no, I, I didn't lose it. I just exported it, and it. I was trying to figure mm. out where it exported to because my documents folder is big, huge, even. Uh, okay. So, Keith, and does the mo motorcycle go. man have, uh, have a name? 
Do they what? The the motorcycle that just passed outside of your door. Uh, they're all douchebags. That's just every every motorcycle. Oh, it's multiple a bad person. people. Of course, yeah. No. Oh crap. That's not like my neighbor. That's a street. That's just <laughs> I can go fuck myself. Well, you're in America. It, Holy it, it, shit! Andrew didn't do paragraphs. <laughs> it's huh? it's yeah, uh, yeah. Everyone is your neighbor. Oh, oh did it not you, come out? It did not come out as paragraphs in the. The thing you export? gave us either doesn't have paragraphs or it doesn't have tabs or something. Oh, okay. Maybe, uh, maybe maybe that's because it's Word. He's using Word, and then bad no, things it's happen. No, it's it's because I tried ex <laughs> I tried making the text bigger. Um, uh, don't I think worry, we can read along. It. We can figure this out. You made the paragraph infinite. <laughs> Yeah, we can figure it out uh, later. If you don't mind, let's see. I don't mind. If I you, don't know if Keith. If you don't mind smaller font, but actual paragraphs, <laughs> then you. I'm can already reading the first line in in the Cave Johnson Fultz, uh, voice. We, we can zoom in. <laughs> there you go. There's both of them. Um, there you go. Okay, so let me. So what was your prompt, things. Andrew? Oh, My right. prompt. He said. Uh, uh, shit. I should have probably put that on the thing, huh? My prompt was <laughs> a plagiarist has a midlife crisis and wants to make something original. That was posted by Matt the Scraphead. Very original name, unlike my uh, character. Um, okay. So let's begin. We have nothing to fear, but fear itself is a quote by a, fa a very famous man, that man being me, Colt Weather. Unfortunately, I have discovered there are two fears, fear itself and creativity. You see, I'm something of an artist. I can paint beautiful works of art, tell timeless literary stories, and play soul-touching music. The one thing I could not do, however, is create something original. For the past three decades, I have been working hard to keep up the illusion of genius, convincing countless of my seemingly boundless talents. All the while, without anyone aware, I have been merely stealing from creative geniuses that came before me. At first, it was a simple sleight of hand. Copy the brush strokes of Da Vinci, lift, uh, lift a rift or two from a piece of Mozart, reword a few lines from a Shakespeare play. I would always steal the base work from a random no-name artist, but trace over it with the work of an unrelated master of the craft. This was a great way to fly under the radar of would-be scrupulous eyes. As the notoriety began, the level of quality needed to rise, along with the charisma to keep it up. Once more people began to really look at my work, they noticed the inspiration. That is where the use of my true skill came in. Deception. At large, the public often wants to see failure compared to success. Failure makes them feel less insignificant about their own lack of accomplishment. So why not spin that cowardly desire onto the very geniuses I was stealing from? I began a disinformation campaign to discredit the world's greatest artist while continuing to steal from them. A slight jab here, a crass comment there, no artist was safe. Eventually, it got to the point where some people were questioning if geniuses of the past somehow had tapped into latent ability to see the future, and were merely borrowing my success in the past. Bless the limitless imagination of those without critical thinking. Conspiracies aside, the hardest part of any con is the deception, and while it was my greatest skill, it was also the most exhausting. I could create intricate knockoffs until my arms fell off, but just a single interview on national television felt like I hadn't slept in weeks. I, it got to the point where it became easier to debut new art at these interviews just, just to take as much pressure off um, my necessity to keep my story straight as possible. Eventually, this resulted in a unique competitive cycle between me and other artists for who could put on the greatest debut display during an interview. Just like that, the artist who, uh, for, or sorry, just like that, the expectation for answering questions ended and replaced with nothing more than an overproduced ribbon-cutting ceremony. Of course, the networks ate it up. I had every talk show host calling to get first dibs on my newest debut as soon as they heard I finished a piece. This wild media circus really helped, as with everyone creating their own spectacles, even if they were as good as me, they still took away, uh, uh, they still took away the attention, 
meaning my work wouldn't be focused on long enough to be found out as a forgery. Attention spans are only getting shorter, so without any long-winded verbal story to give your brain time to sit and really focus on the art, you're left with some someone shooting fireworks off in front of you every time you even try to look at something beyond the initial hype. Sure, there would be plenty who would call out how similar or even downright duplicated my work was. Thankfully, with an audience so loudly cheering me on, they practically drowned out the dissenters themselves without ever realizing it. The kind of outcome a politician spends countless thousands to replicate every election cycle. Speaking of other artists, there were almost as much, uh, they were almost as much a challenge as the interview questions. The key to tricking a master is not to discredit their knowledge, but to seek guidance from it. When an up-and-coming artist would eventually realize the grift, or at the very least know enough to tell something was wrong, I would be the first to ask them for guidance or to collaborate. You see, just because I was adept at stealing from the masters doesn't mean I had to act like one. Humility is worth its weight in gold if you can pull it off genuinely, and as I said before, people love to feel accomplished. Asking someone for their advice gives someone a rush akin to an orgasm. The feeling of being both above another in skill, but also being given the chance to push their own personal views onto another. Once someone has that feeling, all their doubts become hindrances towards that goal of self-gratifying pleasure. Who cares if they feel superior to you? What matters in a grift is not to be better than anyone, it is to simply ride off the grift until it is no longer possible. Which means the less obstacles, the better. In the world of art, no matter if you make music, paint, or social media dance videos, the most important key to success is luck. History has shown that it doesn't matter if you can paint like Van Gogh or play piano like Beethoven if no one will give you the time of day. So, having someone with a reasonably large audience that is begging for content to come along, uh, sorry, so having someone with a reasonably large audience that is begging for content to come along and, ask, uh, and asks you to work with them, well, who would say no? This especially goes double once they realize that calling you out after your collaboration will only tank their own reputation. It is like killing two birds with one stone. While I continue to keep up the grift, I also prop up my competition, so the focus isn't always pointed on me. Sometimes I truly believe I might be a genius. However, even with all my careful planning and cunning execution, one person continued to be a thorn in my side. Lavelle Lule. A true craftsman, able to write poetry with such finesse that you'd think she herself invented the art. She, however, was as talented at picking up on deception as she was with rhyming. Every time I would try to talk with her, she would immediately reply with, Or so you want me to believe. It was both unnerving and irritating her level of perception. Though that is on par for a master poet, able to see even the most minute details of the world and able to craft elegant stories around them. Admiration aside, she was a threat, not only to me, but to the world of art she seemed to passionately be enamored with. While it is hypocritical to, he to hear this from myself, a living genius is often the worst possible one. When a person is held to such a, such a regard while alive, their every action can sway both the public opinion and the competition. While she was busy building a castle, everyone else barely finished a shed and that meant that the expectation for quality started to reach levels unreasonable for those without the means. Regretfully, or some might say ironically, this meant that she, uh, that, uh, that is the, ev that, that, this meant that as the, e the only other genius poet in the world's eye, I was expected to be this woman's rival. This situation did not bode well for me. Given up until now, I had been confronted with a genuine, uh, being given up till now, I had never been confronted with a genuine living genius on my plagiaristic conquest. My only hope was to find out her weakness and exploit it through the only medium she would interact with me on, poetry. Frustratingly, poetry isn't a clean art to fake. Structure, words, rhymes, even the damned category. All of it required such painstaking research to pull off properly, yet this woman was able to turn out a masterpiece as if it were as natural as breathing. Truly a frightening thing to witness, and even worse to be on the receiving end of. Try as I might, I could never find a single master who wrote with the subject matter needed to best my rival. My poems always feelings too stiff or detached from the world in which I claimed to be living in. Meanwhile, the, like the rising of the sun, her words flowed seamlessly up until you felt a warm light wash over you. Like a feeling of nostalgia and ignorance blended into one. As you would imagine, this resulted in a complete and utter failure on my end. No matter how hard I tried, the difference in skill was always apparent. As time passed and my constant failures began to take the center stage, 
So too did her rhetoric. She knew I was a fraud, but she wasn't prideful about that knowledge either. She knew that in order to out me, she couldn't just shout from the bottom as so many others had tried before her. She had to be seen as above me, and my foolish attempt to prevent her rise only made her seem more accurate. Once she knew I could never reach her level again, she began to make it her mission to see me disappear. Every interview, every speech, even several, several of her cover inserts were solely dedicated to discrediting me and my legacy. I imagine even my most hated enemies began to pity my rival's seemingly unquenchable thirst for revenge. Finally, with so much pressure to maintain the lie, the eventual limit of possible geniuses to steal from, and the appearance of a formidable rival, it was time. I decided to retire from the spotlight as gracefully as I could, by releasing an entire poetry book where I plagiarized her favorite works as my own. I can tell, uh, I can tell you I've never seen someone so composed act so enraged. It was almost cute if not for the mind-boggling legal sum her lawyer was threatening me with if I didn't recall the book immediately. As I did, I so too re recalled myself from the public eye. You'd think that after almost three decades of deceiving the world into believing I was a genius, some of that genius would have eventually rubbed off me, maybe even an inspiration or two to create my own work of art. Regretfully, this was never the case. In all my years, I never once created a piece that I could genuinely call my own. I slowly began to languish over this depressing fact, to think that all the time I spent lying, scheming, and plotting could have been used to genuinely master a craft I was so fond of pretending to be good at. I had access to all the resources I needed, all the money I could ask for, and networked with household names you would know today. And yet, I did not. I chose to simply continue stealing, continue lying, and most importantly, continue avoiding the very real fear of inadequacy that plagues us all. I remember some nights I would comb through hundreds of my works, interviews, anything, trying to find just a spark of originality. Nothing. An absolute masterful commitment to pure plagiarism could never be found elsewhere. I worried my entire legacy would eventually become that of, a simple th of, of simply a thief, someone who only took and never gave back, forgettable under the cover of the masters he stole from, once the last remaining believers of my grift were finally converted. I wondered what I could possibly do next. What could I possibly do with all of the public spotlight I've, ca I've casted myself into? Anything I make will be under heavy scrutiny by uh, Lavelle's watchful eyes. That is, when I finally got my, that is when I finally got my first spark of inspiration. So, with that brief forward out of the way, please enjoy my first original piece of work, my entirely self-written autobiography. And to any looking to replicate my success, let this serve as a cautionary tale on how to avoid falling into the same traps. <laughs> it's a plot twist again. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all the beginning of a... I was like, when is the work going to happen? <laughs> like, he's supposed to make a work at some point? That's, that's not plagiarism. He's like, well, my career is over and uh, mm, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so. I, really, I, I, I really, really like that you wrote this from... Obviously, it works on for the storytelling, but you wrote this as a first-person narrative. It adds this sort of surreal sort of fever dream aspect to some of the claims that you're never really quite sure if he's, he's actually saying. There's some stuff here that's just unbelievable. Things like, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was the only genius in the world or something to that extent. And I'm just like, well, <laughs> it's so good that it's the first person because that lands every time. That was good. Because it's his self-description. Yeah. yeah, that's why I wanted to put in that it was. That was like the, the, the fun twist is that it is a self-written autobiography, which means there is no... There, there's no one here to to call bullshit. He gets to just have his full reign over the history of it all. Yeah, um, yeah. which plays into his own his own thing of being uh being a con artist, a plagiarist. He's just like, yeah, he just gets to keep keep that up. Um, but doing it, but by using his own piece of work, which I thought was just a fun a fun premise. It funnily enough reminded me of parts of Ender's Game because like there's there's the whole parts that are from Ender's perspective. But there's like this B plot where like I think his like sister or something is like taking over all of social media and the world essentially and creating a propaganda machine. And it's all like this kind of format of like just like and here's the next thing I did in this next this next stage. And actually, I I defamed all of my critics and fucking I burned the world down. <laughs> <laughs> I it's an I I like that it's such a a thorough I, it's two thousand two two thousand words of a thorough exercise of building a character, even when you're describing <laughs> other characters, and you just kept it. 
uh, like it makes me think that you had a very very specific idea for who this person was yeah i, I was worried that like i i <clears throat> didn't think i could keep up uh or i could come up with a good world like if i had like even even like the rival was a very like very short amount like i tried to keep it very quick and clean just because it was hard mm -hmm. to uh it was hard to to like try to split the the focus for me i'm not very i don't know i like i I, I didn't I couldn't think of anything like Keith's ability or Keith's story having different characters and interacting in certain ways. Like even though it was from a per first person perspective, um, there was still a lot more like interaction with other characters. And I was like nervous mm -hmm. that the interactions might bring in too much like reality. I didn't want to leave the bubble of his own worldview because like that because mm -hmm. he's yeah, a narcissist. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And so you don't you don't want like other people in there because then that you then you start becoming like, I guess, more uh, you become less receptive to the world that he's trying to sell you is when you hear other people talking in it. Uh, so I just yeah, I don't know. I just didn't want to I didn't want other people there communicating. But let me, but I let me like, also tell you yeah. that Lovell or Lavelle is a, another really weird name. <laughs> yeah i so i so what i decided to do is i went online and i found a generator i was like give me a um give me a good french first name and give me like yeah and then give me like a random oh, uh a random surname i think i chose like a random country too i think it was like uh bolivia or like brazil or something like that like what is a a random uh surname from that country and so just took those two and combined it to make a mm-hmm yeah but well here am i looking up latin words for what it means to do this and my city is <laughs> gonna be called this and i, I mean name but, generators uh, I, are very useful yeah, yeah i mean sure. and it's just it is just a name like i uh the names yeah. again aren't really necessarily necessarily important like colt weather i don't know i don't know it's just like the <laughs> first name that came to my head it's not a is that his real name? Probably not. That sounds like an awful real name. I don't think anybody would <laughs> name yourself that. But uh, Colt Weather. His pen name, maybe. Colt Weather. Uh, did, let me yeah, ask you like something. Did, yeah. uh, did you meet when you said like there's one particular place where you talk about uh, other artists as your competition, and like there's an mm -hmm. undertone to to him beating everybody. There's in the whole thing, which is I'm sure very intentional. But specifically the competition, the word competition. Did you? Did you choose that on purpose or is that a throwaway? Is that just, you know, how you chose to describe that? The word competition, uh, I mean. I, I, I meant it like intentionally. Like the idea here is that uh, he, he's not, uh, he genuinely thinks that art is, is a fake it till you make it kind of thing. Uh, so to a degree, other artists are also, they're not plagiarists, but they are also just, uh trying to do the same thing he is they're trying to gain enough uh visibility and notoriety to to rise their station um he only and, sees it as so, like the grift and not as like art yeah to begin yeah, with. yeah exactly so like he's yeah he's not looking at it as like uh because obviously like i don't think beethoven and mozart would consider each other competition i think they would consider each other like uh uh, what do you call it? Like not equals, but you know, I mean, they're like, yeah, they're like colleagues. Colleague, they're in peers. the same field, yeah. but they're not like, they're not competing with each other. They're making music. They're making different types of music too. Um, they, I don't think they were alive at the same time. That was, no, that was but, my first thought. Well, like, that's hmm. true. But, uh, but I meant <laughs> yeah. like, I, I, there are like, there are piano competitions, but I think that when you are a performer, when you are per, like performing music, you're not competing with anybody in that performance. You're just putting on a show. And the goal is to just make a good show. It whether your show is better is you know like a, a monetary relative thing. But like if mm -hmm. you're an artist, your goal isn't to like. That's not your goal. Your goal is to create something that you like. You create something that you are happy with, and also create something that other people are happy with. The financial avenue is like a you know is always just a weird, creepy societal problem that looms in the background, but. Uh, but yeah, especially I don't know, if you're an just, artist, yeah, that lo uh, that it looms really heavy. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, so it's it. The idea is like, yeah, everyone else is in his eyes just trying to do the same thing he is, but not. It, well, as far as he knows, not stealing it. I, you know, uh, he may be a plagiarist, but again, he knows nothing of art. He doesn't. He has no idea whether these people are also it's, genuine or not. It's interesting, like in in real uh, speaking in real life terms. For people starting out making art, and, and especially in more, um, and I, I trendier might might not be the word, but let's go with that for the moment. In trendier genres or or mediums like music or or acting, I I get the impression that people starting out have a lot less capacity to unless they start out already with the mentality of let's I'm just gonna copy from other people and 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 live my life like that there's definitely people doing that and and it's a way to be successful uh for sure uh but i i think people who start out for the love of of the medium uh and i, I say that from from the perspective of music of musicians people take a little while to actually get to the point where they're like oh i'm actually not original like none of what i'm doing right now I'm, i've been doing my best and ha trying to have the best things to do the best things to say or play or whatever uh but i'm still i'm not doing anything original it takes a level of introspection and 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 master mastery i should say um that takes a level of understanding what you're doing that some people some artists never reach that like that's it's kind of weird uh like it feels very that's why i, I think it just adds to the surrealism of the of this thing here is just like this this guy no this guy starts out he he's he's on to <laughs> i'm gonna copy all the things <laughs> It, you know, of course, he's the best, and he paints and does all the things. Uh, at least, if we take him at his word, obviously. I think yeah, if you, I, mean, uh, I think that people that like genuinely create, like they don't plagiarize at all, like they still feel unoriginal and inadequate for like years and years before they get anywhere. Yeah, but you need to yeah, be good I mean, to it's... get to that point. I think. Like there's you need a, to. Yeah, have... again, there's always there's always a level of confidence required to. Uh, to be creative because like yeah how do you you know like someone is always going to tell you you you're not it's like oh you've stolen this or you're uh you know you're uh you're not original you're not creative you're not unique and the idea is not is you just need to be able to push through that to like okay well it doesn't you know like there's a difference between intentionally stealing and not and creating something without the intention of stealing from it is you know it's eventually that will that usually spawns into your own style like that will turn into a thing that is new, uniquely you like even if it even if there are tones like you're talking about music even if yeah every chord has been played before no one's gonna you know it's not like someone's gonna show up and find a new chord that's never been done before but even like the placement of them has probably already been done too but the the way that you place them the style at which your your music is made can be your uniquely your own um just as much and, as like painting like it's there's so yeah. much there's so much freedom in art um like you can I, I suppose music when you're playing music it's a little bit different but like um for for using the exa the other example that i used like acting the, if you you can act the same way that a, another actor acts and in, in a specific role like you act the same way you're doing all the same things but just because of uh maybe maybe it's because of the the the, the fact that you're like um you're, you're imitating an actor from the 50s and you're playing that acting right now that adds value and then adds a different a different perspective to your performance so your art is necessarily different your acting is necessarily different even though it's exactly the same it's just because of the context it's different and it reads different and the same goes for music and playing things like um stuff that's uh like classical music playing the same way that people played back then is nobody does that but if you copy them if you if you go back 200 years and you copy the same the same techniques and and sort of whatever all the all the things involving music today you're making a statement because you're going out of your way to do something that is not normal so you're you're even though you're copying something you're making a statement and it's new and and, and art all, like not necessarily art as a thing but rather human communication 
uh, because that's what art is. It's just us communicating with each other through different means. Like we, we can say the same words to each other and whatever else we do to communicate, we can do the same exact thing and the, and he lands differently just because of the context. And I think uh, obviously that's something that, uh, we'll, I mean, understanding different, that difference as part of art is what defines art and the whole thing about, oh, if, if it's not art, if it's for commercial purposes or, uh, or it's not art, if it's not masterful or, you know, like very well drawn or whatever, uh, like all the, all the different people, different people have different ideas of what art is and, and, you know, in the, over the, the years and centuries, the definition also changes, but like it's, it's unavoidable that even if you don't call it art, like th even simple things like what we're doing right now uh, is uh, is more meaningful and more communicative and more original than a lot of what people could consider art in, in more commercial senses, in more like maybe like a painter just copying a picture or a painting for, for just to sell or whatever, you know, you know what I mean? Like it, what we're doing right now, which we wouldn't normally consider art is more art than a lot of art basically is what I'm saying. Not, not to toot my own horn. I'm just saying that <laughs> I'm, I'm really trying not to, I'm not, I'm not saying that podcasts are art. P take what that saying, Picasso. I've got a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You heard it here first guys. We're high art. Although, although let's plays are art. That's but not podcasts. Podcasts are not. Uh, well, what I'm saying is like wow. we communicate, <laughs> we communicate so much through, uh, through art that and that, that's what gives it value is what I mean to say. I can see that. I yeah, I I, I do get where you're coming from. Uh... So yeah, even <sighs> this guy that that copies everything, the choosing of what to copy is part of his process is part of his persona and yeah he might copy everything he's just but ahead maybe... of the time it's transformative remix culture yeah <laughs> yeah boom redemption story yeah cult weather did, we did nothing wrong wow i can't, I no, can't believe uh, and that's just called that sampling I, a person i've explicitly written to be bad has also has a redemption option yeah <laughs> great it's truly amazing the the human spirit um human spirit it's all it's yeah, all this it, Lowe's yeah. fault she's, she just doesn't give him the chance exactly exactly <laughs> there's yeah it's the I, I i i guess in a sense that's why i was trying to to pair his rival being somebody who actually was talented in the art is because there is a there is an intention like when you when you are creating something you can tell the intention of other people's creations um especially the more closer you are to the to the thing and so uh it's again it's not that she the idea is you know like yeah his she knew his poetry wasn't genuine it wasn't coming from a place of somebody who had uh uh like a passion or like any kind of interest or passion for the for the art it was more of just creating something and going beyond that of like okay well you're not even creating something original you're creating stuff that I know exists already so uh you know like the an average person may not focus on that more it's just more about the consumption uh mm. is there so a screaming child yeah there's is kids across the street <laughs> and sometimes they or, exist and sometimes they don't it's fine or are you listening to true crime podcasts again <laughs> the child no, blunder. No, no, no. yeah unfortunately there's just a lot of children uh within the vicinity of me um, and parents that don't want to hang out with their children. So they go outside mm -hmm. and play with each other, which I guess is good. It's better than kids. I don't know actually what they're doing. So maybe they're outside TikToking. I was going to say it's better than them sitting on the phone all day, mm -hmm. but I don't actually know what they're doing out there. So don't sit on your phone. This There's no more play, play only internet performance. <laughs> <laughs> For all I know, they're out there actually just screaming Gotta about Pokemon. Gotta get my models. brand going at age seven. Exactly. Wow. It, Got to get in early. Monetize your kindergarten interests. Look, all I have to say is if I was, if I had social media when I was that age, I would be way more wealthier than I am today. Cause I was jumping off roofs and showing and like recording kids doing tricks uh, on we're skateboards. Past, we're past the age of jackass. And oh no. But when I was young, we were there's not. There's a new one. That was the, oh, that's the important were, part. Oh, wait, there's a new one. 
a, yeah, yeah, was a, a new right, Jackass yeah. came out like this week. You chose hilarious what? timing. <laughs> what the hell? Is it? We're never past Jack, gonna... Jackass. We'll never be past it. I mean, they die eventually. I meant as a species, we'll always very... enjoy the concept of Jackass. Yeah. Jackass Forever came out February 4th. That's, wow, that's crazy. I feel bad. I mean, that's, a very, that's a very Poor teenager Knoxville. kind of show. I really, I really get a kick out of those movies until poop happens, and then I'm really annoyed. <laughs> what? I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> like what? It's true. Until there was, I think, the, I think Jackass Three had like a fucking like diorama of like a volcano, and he like shat vertically out of it. And I'm like, I hate this. What the is, fuck? is a real is a real vibes killer, honestly. Throw someone into a lake. Uh, let's <laughs> go back to that. <laughs> hey, I fucking uh It was it sold as real though in the US as well? Yeah. Okay. I mean it's reality that, TV stuff, that's like the premise. Cause that like obviously it isn't. But it because it's all staged. But uh, the I mean, almost He's, nothing. Almost none of it can be even conceptualized as being anything other than stage. It's literally just a guy yeah. being like, "I'm gonna do this thing," and then they just do it. And then he's like, "That didn't work great." Ow! And that's the whole scene. <laughs> there's yeah, only like, like occasional. The... There's only occasional like, "Oh man, we're in the audience," and or like we're in a like a we're in public and oh, something's yeah, happening. Okay. Like those those are really rare. At least in the movie, I, I never I watched, watched the very show. little. I watched very little when I was a kid. I remember something about balls being thrown out of a building. And uh <laughs> bicycles. That was the balls bicycles into a truck. Out of a building? Yeah, I don't remember what it was. I think it was that was probably just the one movie that I watched or something. I don't remember. It was I was twelve or something. So No, I wasn't twelve. What am I saying? I was probably sixteen. <laughs> Quick, quick, Still, yeah, my, my story memory, straight. They're gonna come for me. My memory before the four, to, uh, before twenty four years old, it's it's very hazy. I don't remember <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I I I remember a lot of Jackass, but I think it's not. I don't think it's like a. It's not that kind of memory that is what I would imagine. They created it for. I just remember it in the sense of like, man, I can't believe grown adults did this thing for money. Like. <laughs> It's it's always the like man I can't believe like Stevo let an alligator almost bite his dick off for money like like he just let that I, happen it's for staged. some reason it's staged to an extent like there well, yeah pe Isn't people Steve these people in do particular get... famous for being like high as shit for most of that stuff anyway well yeah he had a terrible drug problem during most of Jackass but. Uh, that but i mean again that doesn't make it better like uh, that means nope. that his motivation for doing such it, dangerous acts is even worse um, it, yeah it makes and it that, worse <laughs> and the people around him like contributed to that like they yep. were just like yeah keep mm -hmm. doing it steve-o uh that's just, i don't it just seems insidiously bad um but it's I, there's like i think the only times i ever laughed uh generally during jackass stuff were always the beginning like the intro segment to the whole movie like the really the oh, like silly the like cart. yeah like the shopping cart thing <laughs> is great i love those those are so fun it's like this amazing short story uh and then it goes like and now we're gonna do a bunch of like gopro recorded skits and you're like oh okay well i could just go on youtube.com i don't really need that stuff i was here for the more like high budget production value thing in the very beginning that was really fun um yeah because like the shopping cart was like through a street and explosions were going off and people were like flying around like it's just so over the top and it's great and then you go to like all right i built this like really shitty seesaw and we're gonna throw people off of it by having a really big guy jump onto it you're like all right, all right. <laughs> sure i guess um, that really is like the uh the, that's just the YouTube front page at this point is a bunch of like out of context like ten like ten second clips of just some shit going down over and over again and it just tries to yeah. loop you into clicking them forever. It seems to do well for people. I was looking at my dashboard recently of like if you look at if you go to the dashboard page in your like not even analytics but just normal dashboard, 
there's a section at the bottom that's like people who are subscribed to you sorted by uh sorted by their subscriber counts mm -hmm. if you, you can click that and it's defaults to like the last 90 days but you can set it to be lifetime just like how many like who are the highest subscriber channels that have ever subscribed to your channel and so on uh i've got like one, two, three, four, five. I got six channels that are over 100,000 subscribers subscribed to me. And like one of them is like, I think like a Warriors Cats animator. And the rest of them are all just people that upload like 10 second clips. Like they're, they're meme <laughs> channels, basically, with like no like, and like that's just, and that's really consistent. And like, and they're like, I, I, like you wouldn't recognize any of their names. And like you are not personality driven content to begin with, but it's just like, just an endless deluge of these tiny clips that do so well. It's almost like the equivalent of like those, like you click one, one funny clip about like an, an out of context, like wacky interaction and Elder Scrolls Oblivion. And then they're like, here's 50 more. And then it's like, there's a whole channel <laughs> dedicated just to that basically. Yeah. I wonder if Thank it's you. bots, if they're like, especially for smaller channels, cause you get notified. Oh, this person subscribed. That's a way to reach. If you have bots subscribing to random channels, that's a way to reach people. Yeah. <clears throat> like on Twitter, that where big Twitter accounts will follow you out of nowhere. Just to, so you I can just, see them on your on the, your inbox. I just find it so scary to think about uh similar to like phone calls, I guess. Uh that there there is just without our knowledge, trillions of automated shitty bots hanging out mm -hmm. just doing things on the internet and their goal their purpose their uh, length of existence is all just ambiguous we don't know what they're there for and some people don't even know that they exist like they just some of them that just showed up out of nowhere and are like we're do we're just gonna subscribe to everything that we see on the front of youtube and you're like why why do you <laughs> why are you doing this i'm gonna see how long it takes to radicalize me <laughs> yeah yeah and it's just like it's so weird uh to think about like when somebody interacts with you on any media platform uh or social media platform are they real people like i i don't know like it, it like i have a twitter reply from a conversation i had in a different thread and it it's like someone uh, like a bot is talking to me and they fit all the like premises of a bot like their username <laughs> is like a name with a bunch of numbers in it uh, they can't form coherent sentences. They're, you know, like not all of their posts are just like replies and weird screenshots of some, I don't know, with fucking ghosts. I don't know what this is. It's like <laughs> nightmare stuff. It looks like oh. some kind of weird, like nightmare thing. But anyways, uh, but like, is this a real person? Is this a bot? I don't know. And, but at the same time, like, I, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's very weird. And I think uh, it goes back to that kind of like, that's why those 10 second content stuff works out so well. It's because there's like so many like that, that small amount of time, like it just happens automatically. And it may not may not be a bot at the end of them watching, but oftentimes it's like a person just leaving YouTube on and it just runs in the background. And so there's not really a person there. But I like, do think about that, like the number of times I like I I pay attention to YouTube whenever i'm using it like i'm either watching the video yeah. or i'm multitasking with the video but like the video is like on my other monitor while i'm using my computer or something like i'm not like leaving the room and doing laundry or like going on errands and driving away like <laughs> the number of times <laughs> other, everyone everyone else in this household will just let youtube run and like autoplay and it'll just kind of work through stuff and so on like i'll see like, like the, the people will be like working on stuff or they'll be like they'll literally just leave like just go away you know like at one point i was watching a movie and someone came over and started watching the movie with me and they had just left their t their computer running in the other room still playing audio on the speakers of the thing they were watching and i had to be like can you can you stop that can you turn it off <laughs> if you're not even watching it like because it's just, i don't know how it's not distracting to you but it is to me like this is this i don't understand other people i don't understand other people in many ways like there's people who will just start playing a youtube clip on their phone while sitting on a couch full of people watching a movie and i'm like what the fuck i don't understand why you would 
ever do that. Anyway, I, I looked at the number one most subscribers channel that's subscribed to my channel, and they have they have almost half a million subscribers, what? and their primary source seems to be a thirty second video that has one hundred and fifty million views. Where they go, they open their back door, and there's just like a dozen cats meowing at them, and they throw them a handful of like kibble to eat, and they all that's like nice... and they all like jump to eat the the food, and I that's the that whole video. I like <laughs> that, that one video like... is like my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I like that video. Leave a like and subscribe. You got and <laughs> leave a like and subscribe. <laughs> I feel like you could. I I don't know. I feel like that's a video I could probably just steal from the internet and. That's probably what happened on that one, like, by the way. It's so yeah, common. Like it's so common. Like I, I feel like I've seen that video in seven different ways. Like I've seen raccoons yeah. do it and cats do it and like I can verify. Fish do oh it. yeah, there's, there's like those Japanese islands, right? Like the cat island and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like there's I saw videos going around of that. I confirm that this person uh, is authentic because their <laughs> I just saw this. Their YouTube banner is their silver play button. In a pile of cat food with the same cats and the same oh, okay. on the so same deck, <laughs> like they put, they, just, they put their silver play button in that scene. The idea of like just filming your cats for thirty second intervals, only a handful of times, and that's your entire channel, and you have a silver play button. <laughs> it kind of hurts me. <laughs> it, uh, that hurts me a lot. I I question hey, a know, lot of. You know what head. hurts me? You know uh, what hurts me? I'm looking at the at the same count the subscribers or you know by ordered by subscriber count and i have yeah. two channels above a hundred thousand and none of them is keith yeah i don't subscribe to any of you guys <laughs> i have you in a bookmarks folder i'm kidding i'm kidding yeah i know wow i don't i don't I subscribe YouTube to like no difficult. gaming content it's so spammy and i actually use the subscriber tab wow hey i only publish a video a day it's the primary spending. time I subscribe to any of you guys is sometimes to subscribe to Bird or Andrew when I'm wondering when their channel will come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> I keep and it as like, like a And tally. then you unsubscribe? Oh. Yeah, go, yeah, I unsubscribe <laughs> when they actually upload something. I'm like, oh, they started uploading again. Like, I just want to know. Like, oh, are they gonna? Are they ever going to come back? It's been six months. <laughs> and, then I, and then I get it. And then one day you're in my inbox. I'm like, oh, they, they started uploading again. I, I don't even how know you how you would how do you even find out who has the most I don't have time to watch a gaming I channel know, do you kidding. know how much content I'm, they make I'm, I have busted. found so many good I video guess. essay channels that now there's too many and I can't keep up with them like I, I, <laughs> I, just found a a, I just found a guy that did a video on the Cowboy Bebop Netflix series and he didn't even have a thousand subscribers yet and I'm like look at me go I mean, wow. the ground floor. He's gonna be more successful than me. <laughs> that is ambitious. He already is actually. I'm not gonna be. He already is more successful than me. Uh, what is it? Wait, he has yeah. less than. Oh, yeah, his, you uh, have like three thousand or four thousand, five thousand. Uh, no, not subscribers. I mean, his uh, his Cowboy Bebop video has fifty three thousand oh. views already. <laughs> Yeah, that oh, thing that has a lot of views. It's his, yeah, but that's his first that's video. selection bias, oh. though. The reason you found like, him Jesus is because it, it has a lot of views. Yeah. Not I didn't say around. people in generally are more success successful or whatever. I know the massive graveyard that is at the foot of all of YouTube. I'm saying he is. <laughs> yeah. All of my I think all of my video essay videos, including all of the jokey non so not so essay ish ones combined, have less views than that one video he made. I'm trying to see. I think the it looks like the blow them out of the channel. Water. Yeah, the channel with the most subscribers is 911 K. Um that's a lot. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Uh, yeah, I think it. Uh, it looks like they just do a lot of reactionary stuff. So. Oh, that's bad. Uh, I think he means. Oh, do you mean yeah, reaction reactions? Stuff. Yeah, I think they just. <laughs> yeah, they're just like talking. Then, it looks like they like just do a lot of like silly skit reaction stuff. Um, I don't. Yeah, it's not like gameplay footage. It's yeah, it's just mostly skits. Like it's just like a skit comedy channel, like you would see back in like uh, Smosh days or whatever. Um, and sometimes they talk about current events, so that's probably why I guess because people most of these videos are like less than ten minutes, so it's probably why they have so many views because you can get through their entire catalog in like you know like a month or something, and that's like perfect binge content. 
uh, let's see, what is their most most popular thing is a 16 minute video. So, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. The, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's not, obviously, that's not the type of content I make. I mean, Colonel's on the, Colonel's here on the top 10 list. Yay. So, it, like, they're the, they're the way outliner, uh, outliers here. It goes from like 911,000 to like 76,000 very mm -hmm. quickly. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know why any of these people, they're probably not subscribed for me. They're probably subscribed for back when the channel was like, yeah, 2013, 2014, 2015. Oh, it says yeah, when they subscribed. Say. Yeah, it says when they subscribed. So this is back way before it was just my channel alone, obviously. Because um, all the people that are here for date subscribed or, yeah, have like no subscribers. They're all dead. Yeah. They just exactly. forgot. <laughs> They've never, they um, haven't logged in since, since 2016. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to well my top channel has 245k and uh it's a gaming channel actually about uh anime games and i think it's mostly anime games and it does stuff like top 10 things and let me see what the most popular is genshin impact something or other yeah it's yep, that there you go sort of so I'm actually on point with my subscribers. My, see, my subscribers like games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, my top subscribed subscriber. This is weird with a subscribed subscriber subscriber count. <laughs> <laughs> but, see, yeah. I've got a guy that makes Sims 4 builds. Mm. Sims 4 This feels builds. weird because some of the people Who I'm talking he? about I might know him. will see the video. <laughs> Oh, well, if he's the I top subscriber... It feels weird to call people out. I don't want to name anybody because oh, there's, there's, there's only two the outcomes. No, there's only two outcomes that happen when you name somebody. It's either nothing happens or they leave. <laughs> <laughs> or they there's leave. Almost no, oh, there's almost no them. positive outcome to mentioning somebody. Because uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's pretty much uh -huh. just those. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Them. I've had a couple of months where I'm like, oh, shit, that guy's in the comments. And then they never show up again. I'm like, wow, ooh, I shouldn't oh, have responded no. to them. That's yeah, that's how <laughs> YouTube felt, works. They felt singled out. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking of how YouTube works, today I filled out the, the, the survey that YouTube is sending to creators about, hey, here's your sense to make YouTube better, better. And I'm like clicking the button and thinking, make the dashboard customizable, make the dashboard <laughs> customizable. And, and, and obviously I wrote that in that bit. But um, I was really negative today. When, when they asked me, how satisfied are you with the monetary compensation? Very dissatisfied. And I'm getting the same as I was, was but this, I, it's, mm -hmm. it's a sham. It's a freaking Why shame. haven't you decided that I'm the god of YouTube? I can be Markiplier. <laughs> it's I? easy. He Not just I? makes noises. Creators in general. Because they, they freaking no, make me. The, they make the platform for creators that aren't here. Like, this is a weird, weird eco ecosystem where... Like people who are, who are, you never hear people being successful or big channels. I mean, maybe big channels like Linus Tech Tips or something that's different, but like individual people with individual single person channels, you never hear them be like, uh, oh yeah, YouTube is really making changes that are making my, my channel grow. It's always, it's always like new channels that show up. Oh yeah. YouTube made changes that made my channel grow. And then they get the chopping block next time. Oh, like people just kind of show would... up and then they're suddenly huge. Yeah. yeah, I would wonder if you'd actually even say anything or notice that. Like, I feel like you notice when something breaks, but you're not going to notice when something's going well. You think your success is your own, uh, your is because oh, yeah, of your that's... own actions, yeah. not because YouTube like changed the algorithm. Uh, mm -hmm. There are obviously times where like I, I can see you would be questionable about that. Like if you, if you notice that uh, something just takes off unnaturally and you're like uh what happened you know like you have a video that no one's ever watched in the past year and suddenly it has like fifty thousand views you're like uh oh something oh, it's changed weird like that yeah mm -hmm. yeah but otherwise yeah, yeah i don't think you'd ever us it's usually epics to epics giving this game out for free and for some reason when they put it out for free everyone watches videos about it instead of just playing the free game <laughs> they already have i think yeah. they want to well, see I mean... if it's worth waiting for the download to finish no, because nobody plays games anymore. They just well, yeah, they just share experiences. Yeah. Jeez. Nobody got time to play games. 
It's, it's got, we got the social it. media to comment on and things. I it's, don't get how people work anymore. I don't. I don't. I play don't video games. <laughs> I play the video games. Shockingly, I don't. It's good to play so the it, video there, games. There is like an element watch... where people think they need to share in order the experience in order to like feel like it's real or something. I mean, on a certain level, that's true. And also, Keith, that's high. That's 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 interesting coming from you, the let's player. Yeah, because I'm sharing it <laughs> while I'm playing it. Who doesn't play like, games when he's not online? Well, it's I, I play enough games. <laughs> it's true, but like you get yes, uh, it's mighty mighty. Do you? I, and I have an especially not game playing hobby that I do now. And so that's do pretty you, much what keeps me busy. Did you pick up the guitar? No, I, I write long scripts that I never finish, oh, and then I throw them in the garbage one. and start new ones, and then no, that don't throw them in the for garbage. Four months. <laughs> Save them for a year, because then when you go back, you're gonna oh, I, this was really yeah. good. I made a post yeah. on Patreon that uh, it was like excerpts that were like vaguely salvageable from like all the different scripts I had, and it was really a a moment of like oh fuck really when I when I looked at my own progress there because I was just like Jesus Christ. The, the 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 document itself is twelve thousand words or twenty six pages, and it's That's from a one. To, it's a one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen, 13 different essays. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I mean they're unfinished. And those aren't even those aren't even the stubs, but they're like each one's like more than a page. That's a lot. Yeah. It's about two pages on average per essay. That's just like the excerpt I chose to share, not even the full thing I've worked on. Oh, like that's okay, how, okay. that's how like widely spread I am between different ideas that I could potentially develop that are just like fucking everywhere. It's just a mess. Do it, do it. Uh, I will never like run I do out with my, ideas. Do it like I do with my songs. Record them and put them in a cupboard, and then a few years later you're going back and like, oh, this was actually nice. Or I, run, I always run into some kind of block where I, I, uh, I have something that I can't figure out how to attack, like how to phrase the topic or how to approach it or that or the entire thing starts to have a structure that doesn't make sense. And I'm like, this whole thing doesn't. How do I connect these ideas as an actual structured thing? Because it warped into something else. Or one of the most disheartening things is sometimes I'll really get into writing about something for like a day and then realized the whole thing I wrote doesn't actually fit the essay that I was in. <laughs> like, it was just a rant, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, I've essentially finished two essays recently that might, that are probably going to become videos. Uh, one about Stan and one about uh, about Lego She that both, Stan like... And the Stalker? No, the yeah, the song. Yeah. Oh, the uh, song, and, yeah. and they're both spinoffs from other essays. They're both, like, this tangent... The more it develops just does not actually fit with the larger thing I was working on. So it's like, I guess I'll just make like the like I'll, I can I could if I can revise them into a state I'm happy with and they can turn into like the equivalent of the Zelda video. That's just like a little 10 minute thing. And then they don't then they cease to be a distracting thing in the middle of the other video. But I also get to have content now ish as opposed to waiting for those mega projects to finish. But yeah, like that was. I, wa I wasn't I ready for how long the. Uh, I was just trying to give Patreon something a bit, and also kind of feel better about my various unfinished projects. But I was not ready for how long that document got, or how many separate essays there were, because even I had lost track of how many there were. Hmm. Yeah, I found recently, or a few, uh, a month ago, or something. I found a channel uh, that's relatively new uh, that has. That's all that you know. It's it's uh, essays as well. <clears throat> I shared it. I shared it with you, Keith, and then you said, "Yeah, I I, I found him like last year." Um, one thing. Uh, this is F FD signifier is the uh, yeah. channel. Uh, and we were talking uh, about meteoric thing... rises and shit, and I was that's what was coming to mind, and I was like, "Oh yeah, like Ro Ramden, CJ the X, and and FD signifier just fucking exploded recently the thing, and even you look at the any thing, of their channels none of their videos even say like two years ago and i'm like ah! <laughs> uh no! the thing that I really that i noticed thoroughly from just a technical perspective is how capable he is to sort of stick to a subject and obviously he has a lot of things to say but the but he just he like it, you can tell that there's 
missing pieces from his scripts or or maybe you maybe that's not something that's in my head maybe you there are none but then just because of the way he writes but it feels like sometimes it's like he, there's avenues that you could go on and you, you maybe he does, he's not fully explaining this context or whatever and he does that on purpose because the, the, then he does other videos that explains that um but i, I like that's a th that works well on youtube because obviously like if you talk about a subject and leave mi pc pieces missing then people are going to be want to watch the other video that's about that. And the mistake is linking it in the middle of the video because nobody's going to watch another video in the middle of another video unless... Yeah, like, you forget. Uh, but the, the leaving stuff unsaid is, is very effective, I feel, the, to make people binge watch. It's like when I would watch Always a Bigger Fish by uh, Innuendo Studios and every single time I watch that video, which is fairly often the whole handbook uh or playbook series uh i always hear the voice of the guy at the beginning and i'm like who the fuck's that guy he sounds like he's like a dude somewhere on youtube or something i should check out what his channel is or see if i can find who he is or something and then by the time the video is over i always forget it was like <laughs> it was like literally years later when i finally watched when i was watching again that i finally remembered to check who he was i'm like oh it's steve shives a star trek youtuber and then via via him I, like i watched some of his, his more popular videos or something and then found mm -hmm. via him jesse gender because they collaborated and that's like been like mm -hmm. that 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 leads to like a train of finding more channels and so all that but it all was because it took me like like I, I i only just now am watching both of their channels after it took me like probably like three or four years to finally follow up on that nag that nagging thought of like i should look into who that voice is at the beginning of this video that that's <laughs> because I, I would always forget by the time the video's over like pl mid video plugs don't work at all Dives also does a um like a, a stuffed animals comic thing that's pretty cool he does what? Star Trek a lot uh, or he used to do anyway. I found Jesse Stuffed Gender animals. as well through his channel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's kind of funny because it was like we mentioned her. Um, I think it was like two or three weeks or three weeks ago, and I had found her channel like a few days before. <laughs> yeah, it's the algorithm. Our fates are intertwined. So when whoever I follow, you it suggests them to you a few Eventually. weeks later. It yeah. just, it's a, the, you've actually found like via osmosis you've been given FD signifier and, and jesse gender through me mm -hmm. i wonder if it does that sometimes because been... you're subscribed to me technically so i'm like i wonder if that if the twitter shit happens where it's like oh um... he liked this and now it's going to send him to all his viewers like does it out do you does it algorithmically share the in, people that you follow's interests it, i don't even know it probably should it doesn't sound like it's any harder than matching all the views because matching all the views is such, so computationally intensive to see where, you know, people who watch this video goes go majorly to watch this video and then categorizing all that sort of stuff. And, you know, that's that's yeah. what YouTube does. But through subscriptions, it's a lot cleaner. So it should. The pro I, the, that's the thing. The, that's what started me on the rant about YouTube's survey. I think like if YouTube wanted to help its creators. And this is weird, what I'm about to say, but maybe, maybe it is weird. But if YouTube wanted to help its current creators that exist currently and are creating, what it should do is it should allow viewers to sort their subscriptions. You go into their subscriptions page and have freaking sort buttons, things that think like, sort by I what? only want to see this genre or this channel oh. or this thing. It should have tools for people to use their freaking subscriptions instead of like being a vague nebulous thing that doesn't mean anything because people don't use them. I use yeah, them. it would it would be a lot better if subscriptions, the subscriptions tab itself was given uh, love as much needs... or more attention than the home page gets. Like, yeah, it needs it, way more. It's, yeah, it should be it should be something that like. I don't know. I think it should. It, you should incentivize people to use it. Give people like customization options. Give people like you're talking about. Like you can choose what you want mm -hmm. to show up there. Or like, yeah. Why can't you just have uh like think of it like a dashboard, like a hub. You can show yeah, up and say, yeah. okay, here's my here's my list of crew, like uh whatever, like uh let's players. Here's my list of these kinds of people. And like I only want to see, you know, like I want to see the videos from these people in this section new videos from these people in this section and that way it's not just a flooded screen 
you can just like mm -hmm. organize it a little bit more efficiently you can have other stuff like here's a could you put like the uh, video i was trying to watch but <clears> left behind like front and center and then below it have like different playlists that i i am trying to get through like my yeah, video yeah. essays and let's plays and cooking videos or whatever and that way you can mm -hmm. like basically you you should have your your subscriptions feed your subscriptions page should be the default page that you spend all your time on it should be where you want to spend the most amount of time because it has all the content that you literally go to the website for and you and can have no, your yeah. hmm? sorry keep going oh no i was just gonna say you can have your your you know your whatever youtube does like on the sidebar you can have like yeah, yeah, at, when yeah. you load a video it shows like these are some recommended videos or whatever the crap it wants to do um but i That's think exactly that's what i was gonna say yeah yeah but i think like the necessity for trying to merge people to uh, everyone should be on the front page is a terrible idea because it doesn't work for anyone it doesn't work for no, getting new creators it seen it doesn't it but it, it does it i don't think it, I don't it think works like for new... youtube it works well, for the people making money and that's but the problem. also but the people making the money aren't the are, are generally people who subscribers come back they're they're the people who had to go out of their way to tell their subscribers to go against the system youtube created i don't think that like i i guess at there's some level that the algorithm assumes that after like you know 75 million people watched a pewdiepie video maybe we should put it on the front page sure but like it's it's not as if but the youtube front page wouldn't instinct doesn't instinctively give me a new pewdiepie video when it comes out it doesn't instantly do that which if it was a good system it would know that this is going to be a popular video it should be front and center and it would but, also do that if it knew based on my subscriptions that it's a video i may watch because i also subscribe to quote unquote gaming channels i don't know what there, his channel is, is but it's whatever um <laughs> there is a balance though uh, like uh, it's very obvious i think in my head it's very obvious what i'm about to say but um so what youtube wants is not to piss anybody off, obviously, but um, but what it wants is like it's got all these videos in its hands, and some of them are more profitable than others. Like there's this video about cats, and that one advertisers they're they're good. They pay two bucks for that one. It's it's good. And then there's this video about <laughs> a, a long play of Dark Souls or whatever, and then advertisers don't pay as much. It's only one dollar for that one, and or for whatever reason there's this differences. So YouTube has a vested interest in showing anybody, anybody, literally anybody, showing the cats video instead of the Dark Souls. So it's always a freaking balance between YouTube not being just showing the latest videos of PewDiePie or cats, and and but also like it it just permeates everything. It it's uh, yeah it's if you like Dark Souls, it's gonna show you the Dark Souls. But the moment you watch a cat video in in Dark Souls, that's it forever cats because that pays more, and that's that's why they want first off that's why they want people to go to the main page because that's where they have their algorithm driven content. And it's as you said like. There's no reason why they can't have that as well in the subscriptions page if they remake their subscription. You, you didn't say it in the subscriptions page, but like they could have algorithmically driven content in the subscriptions page if they reframed it and if they made it to be like that. Yeah, they could I'm have imagining... things like suggest me another channel like this or suggest me a video or a, a playlist for videos like this. They love their mixes yeah, because uh, they're algorithmically driven because they are. I'm just a, they prioritize I'm... the cat videos. Uh, in my head, I'm imagining that like a a good subscriptions page would have uh would have like the playlist like on, when you open a play when you watch a playlist, it has that little thing of like here's the next video or whatever to watch. It has that as like uh an option that you can put wherever you want on the screen, and at the top is always the video that you're watching, and it has like the line below it where you can click to expand, and it brings all the comments and descriptions and whatever the hell. And then mm -hmm. to the side, it has that same uh, it has that same bar that's on every video where it has like, OK, here's here's like 16 videos that you probably don't ever want to watch. Um, oh, you keep that you, at, the, at the to the side. Yeah, you I, just I, keep uh, that to the side and you have the video in the front. It's I basically the same. You have the exact same page that you look at right now to go play videos, except the bottom of the screen. Like it's, so when you instead of it just being defaulting to comments, because why? Instead of it defaulting to comment section, it just shows the video proper. And then it shows all the things that you care about, like the other videos that you want oh, to specifically watch. And then onto the side, you have your little advertisement section or whatever for videos That's you want to 
push to people. And then if you want to look at comments for some god reason, or you want to look at the description, it has that little bar like it already does. You just click the arrow and it comes down. And you just scroll. It's like an iframe. You That's just scroll mobile, through though, it. I think. What? That, that bar that you're referring to, I think it's on... No, on... no, it shows up in, in regular YouTube, too. Um, if you're oh, on, when you're if in you're a playlist on... mode. I've, I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like, and because it also does it for descriptions, yeah. too. Like, like descriptions don't, I mean, show, you know, it says, like, show more or whatever. Um, they would never design it like that just for the sake of it. It sounds good to me. Oh, there's a the caveat of people like me who have the uh, extended view on or the theater mode on. I have it all. all yeah, I do, too. Yeah. Yeah. But so there's but, that caveat, but, you had but... Th but I'm thinking of in the sense of like YouTube wants to be a social media site. It keeps adding these shitty social media features. It keeps trying to like cater to this hot TikTok phenomenon of like 30 second videos at most. So like why not just create a page that people would want to sit on and watch the things they want to watch, but you also give them opportunities to watch other stuff. Like you I don't know. I just like I, I'm thinking of like, uh, I, I guess I always just keep defaulting back to like the Facebook idea. Like it's so genius to give people an incentive to go back to a page that they have had control over that they created because it, it incentivizes you to keep going back to the thing that you invested time in making. And the subscriptions page doesn't feel like that. It feels like a, a, it feels like the front page, but with channels that you actually want to watch. It, but it's still just a mm -hmm. dump and you don't get to control in what order uh, by default. You don't get to control like, you know, what genres you want to look at because YouTube categorizes all its videos. All of YouTube's videos are categorized already. You have like, you know, you have like gameplay or blogging or whatever. So why can't you mm -hmm. just why can't you just say I want it? Here's a list of all the channels that fit into this category, please. Or like, you know, the category. I, yeah, the yeah, uh, or you sorry. could just say, I want to, I only want to watch videos for, I want like a, a, an entire sidebar on the bottom dedicated to just videos from this channel because I'm going through their entire, their entire backlog. I don't want to have mm -hmm. to keep going to videos, click on the video, then go back to their channel, then click on videos, go to the video, click up, you know, like it's such a bad process. But if I click subscribe, go onto one page, bring up that content creator and just go through every single video that they have without having to deal with like six different interfaces, I would be more yeah. inclined to sitting on that page for long periods of time, which means that there's a higher chance that I will see the sidebar videos and a higher chance that I will in engage with advertisement. Like I don't under like the, t the precious time you're losing between people leaving the video page, going to another page, clicking on the video they want is like all time that you're not advertising to someone. That's incredibly wasteful. Like it's just very weird. But they put it, they don't want together. people doing that though. That's why that's why they that, that's why it is like that. They don't want people binge watching a, a channel. Why wouldn't they? They want to give you the you still have video. advertisements on it. They all they care about are the yeah, ads. Yeah, but but the ads aren't the same across the, all videos. You guys know that they removed the progress bar from re recommended videos so that you'd forget if you watch them or not? Yeah. Uh I did not notice yeah, this. I did notice that. Um, but it's okay because I never fucking click on the stupid recommended thing, oh, so it's it doesn't on the sidebar, matter. Right? Yeah, right. it's on the sidebar. Yeah, on the but sidebar, like, it'll it'll straight up be like, "Hey, you want to watch the folding ideas video about chicken nuggets again, 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 yeah. again?" <laughs> yeah, that I they're just making that thing less useful because I don't I don't Which... use it because it is already not useful. Exactly. And that's like, that's my, that's the point I'm trying to make here is that I think that YouTube keeps like, and maybe, maybe it's just a long con that we have no, we all just don't have an idea of, but it feels as if the, they just keep making the site less and less user friendly. They're just making it not ideal for people to want to use in a, in any capacity. Like, why would I, why would I want to go to YouTube? It, it would be so much easier if I could just like TikTok makes sense. You just show up and there's videos there and you just scroll through them and they keep playing for you. That is so, like why I hate that. What, so like, much. Yeah, you hate that, but people, new people would fucking hate going through YouTube system. It sucks oh, sure, trying to figure sure, out yeah. stuff. So like why wouldn't you just take the easy avenue? I'm just going to swipe through a bunch of like hundreds of thousand fucking videos. Wow, this is so effortless. I don't have to 
I don't have to worry about anything. Oh, I don't like that person. I could just press a button and it'll never show up again. Like, that's so much easier than it would be to try to, like, navigate some archaic old web mixed with new web mixed with whatever someone forgot and abandoned 10 years ago web. Like, it's it's such a weird... I don't I don't know what I, I just don't know where YouTube wants to be. I don't know what it what it wants to YouTube be. YouTube doesn't it, know it, either. It doesn't want to be itself. It doesn't want to be a social media site. It doesn't want to be the future, but it also wants to be all of those things. And so it's like, well, all right, but you I don't know. You you fail at doing all of them, but you also seem to not want to be any of them. So I don't I'm not surprised that people don't. <laughs> you know, I'm not surprised that uh so people complain about their videos not doing well or being confused about how algorithms work because it's just I don't think the site understands how it works. I think it just people just do a thing and it's so big that any choice that's made is always going to cause rumbles and people I've just still have never to... seen evidence of this thing where supposedly they don't send view videos to subscribers. Uh, uh I, I'm, I, I'm convinced I that that's just people using the website wrong. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, just, I mean, like I think they're that's... Just, like they're only using the front page and expecting it to show them 100% of the videos of all of the things they're subscribed to somehow. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. No, that's what the subscriptions tab is, dumbass. Well, yeah, but where is <laughs> like, but when you go to the subscriptions tab, let's see. I've never seen subs the subscription not showing one particular channel. I have seen the subscription yeah. showing channels that I'm not subscribed to, but that's what? because I, I, yeah, there's just like if you unsubscribe sometimes uh it won't it will still show their videos for a little while on your subscriptions oh. and i say a little while like a few hours <clears throat> it happened to yeah. me twice it's just that's normal that's cash so whenever servers, i hear complaints about that i'm like i don't know man i've been on this platform for uh my life practically and i work here and i'm this tab is open all the time i have never like been like oh what do you mean uh, what do you mean a video came out from that channel that i love I can't believe I missed yeah. it. It's like, no, I saw it. I just didn't get around to it because there's so many videos. But like, there's no like mysteries like, oh, it snuck past me. That just didn't show up in my sub subscriber tab. It's like, no, you're looking at a page that shows you like six videos on the front page and it just has to pick some. <laughs> like, that's not that's, like, that's not the same thing at all. Yeah, that was like I a weird I... misconception that was going around for so long. And I'm like, that's just not happening as far as I can tell. Yeah, I mean, that's the... I, I think it was just more excuses to create uh, engagement, Bud. right? Because you're because the idea here is that you uh, people then the response was people saying like, oh, you got to click the bell. You got to get notified. Yeah. And like you can talk uh, about how like you're they're being attacked by YouTube and their yeah. channels being suppressed. So like, comment, subscribe and interact and share and uh, and so on. Yeah. Exactly. It's there's, just there's channels it, you're that just... never shut up about how under attack they are, and it's probably yeah. because they noticed that it worked. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, because I remember there was also the little, there's the cute little thing that stopped happening, which was like YouTube used to show you like how many how many subscribers were watching your video and how many non-subscribers are watching your video. And you're like, see, all like there's only fifty percent of subscribers watching videos. Yeah. Where are the I other fifty percent? And you're like, well, eventually that stops happening because people are like, hey. That's because those accounts are bots and they don't actually exist. It's like, uh, no, actually, well, you guys the, gotta... <laughs> actually it's a good thing that there's 50%. Actually, 50% is probably not a great number. You want a vast majority of your views to come from non-subscribers because it means well, you're doing yeah, well in the I, searches. That's, and you're that's doing the well thing. In, like, it's like, pushing. I think that's why people stop doing it because it see, it looks really stupid to say that. It's because really if you stupid, have a yeah. hundred, yeah, if you have a hundred percent of your viewers are subscribers, that's not a very good metric to tell people because it means that no one knew is coming to watch your videos. Yeah, basically. You don't want that. You would That's yeah. actively telling people to stop if subscribing. If you have a YouTube channel, it, looks like it shrinks every day. Yeah. So yeah. It, you need to be also growing faster. And so, like, uh, and again, so I think it's just, uh, like he said, it's just people, wants, people want an excuse to be attacked. And so those mm -hmm. are good tools to make it look like you are under attack. But eventually, you know, eventually that stops or people just like give up and say like no 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 this is too much or it doesn't work and that's like, when you, you that's see. when you create drama with someone that's true it's always good to create <laughs> drama um i i wish yeah. i had people to create drama with i only got myself and i'm really Andrew, good at creating drama with myself you can create drama with me is that really gonna work i don't i'm very bad at it but i can try see? i mean 
I don't know. There hasn't been a VidCon in like two years, which is a really big problem because, you know, that's the great place to come do drama. <laughs> you just show up wearing like a, a tingle suit I, and you start throwing cake on people. They're going to talk about you real quick on TikTok and YouTube and everywhere. And then you get the subscribers. Lot, I have a lot of trouble with that much drama in public. It's complicated. I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a, a genius here when it comes to marketing yourself for YouTube, obviously, since my channel is not very successful, but I, I don't really know what the, I can't imagine what the, the benefit of drama would be. Um, it just sounds mentally exhausting to deal with like two different, I don't know, like to have two a lot different of people talking about you. Yeah, it's like a two different. You just have to you have to get a specific kind of drama that isn't like you're a monster, because then mm -hmm. you just get carpet bombed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly the problem. But, oh like, man, a feud. Uh something about fucking a Paul brother is gonna box some other guy. No, I, I don't. His name's for and his name's forgotten now. But the other guy the or guy, the Paul brother? The other guy. <laughs> But like for a while there, I literally only knew his name because it kept coming up in news things about the stupid boxing match that I didn't want to hear about, but kept hearing about. And it's like, that's oh, yeah, a dude. lot. I mean, that's effective advertising because I had never heard of that guy. And I only knew about him because he kept fucking coming up in those stories. But I never pursued that, obviously. So I'm back to not remembering him again. Fair. The end. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> We're over time. <laughs> oh, food has arrived, you mean? No, I've been eating for a while now. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> of course, yeah. You know, I, uh, I got up and left at one point and came back with my yeah, food because it had arrived. I figured that much because there was like dead silence. I was like, okay, Keith's either eaten or he's gone to get his food. No, there was, yeah, there was, a, there was a chunk where it, it was like, oh, the text message is saying that it's here is 10 minutes old already. I'm just going to go. <laughs> 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 and so I went and got it. Sure. It is All a right, sweet well, and sour fish fillet. It's time mm -hmm. to end it then. It's got See you next week for and my onion story. And carrot. I hope so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Time yeah. and then he'll time travel back to this podcast and perform it this week instead. Crazy. That's, Whoa! No, that's a bad idea in the story that I'm making. It's really bad. We should Ooh. incorporate the podcast and being late in the story. <laughs> Oh, no, don't make it more Meta. complicated than it already is. More complicated. 5,000 words. Your word count just went up. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you, you have a word count with interest. <laughs> That's if, you don't, if you don't get it done in time, you fail the class. And also the nearest student in the class also fails. We'll just pick one. <laughs> <laughs> what? But those are stakes. Yeah. That sounds like it's a pretty... Like a, it's like in the military where they just punish the rest of the people instead of you. <laughs> That sounds mm. great. That's a great way to build uh, camaraderie. <laughs> you don't do or that the in the opposite word. If everyone hates do... you, they all work together. Oh, yes. God. <laughs> all right. All right. Good night, everybody. See you next week. Goodbye.